Hello guys, welcome to this course of Bash Shell Scripting Bootcamp with 10 real world projects. So let's see what is shell scripting. Let's see the definition and its use case. Okay. So shell scripting is the process of writing and executing scripts in a shell or command line interpreter to automate tasks. It involves using scripting languages such as bash to write a series of commands and instructions that can be executed sequentially. Shell scripts are commonly used in Unix like operating systems for system administration and automation purposes. This course of bash shell scripting bootcamp where you will remark on an exciting journey to become a master of the command line, in this comprehensive course, we have equipped you with the essential skills and knowledge to harness the power of bash scripting. The bash shell is a powerful tool used by developers, system administrators, and anyone who wants to automate tasks, streamline workflow, and unlock the full potential of their computer or system. Whether you are a beginner or an experienced user, this course is designed to take you from zero to hero in the world of bash scripting. Lead by industry experts, this bootcamp is crafted to provide you with a hands-on learning experience through a series of engaging lectures, practical examples, and interactive exercises. You will gain a deep understanding of bash scripting and how it can revolutionize your workflow. Throughout the course, you will explore a wide range of topics starting with the basics of the bash shell and gradually processing to more advanced topics. You will learn how to navigate the file system, manipulate files and directories, write conditional statements, create loops and even automate repetitive tasks with ease. But it doesn't stop there. Our instructor will guide you through real world examples and best practices enabling you to write efficient and maintainable scripts. You will also discover useful tips and tricks that will boost your productivity and make you a more effective bash scripter. So I invite you to take this course to level up your career as a system administrator or a developer. Okay. And if you are into cybersecurity, you can also take this course because in cybersecurity, bash scripting is a very much needed skill. Let's see some tasks that can be performed using shell scripting. Shell scripting is a versatile tool that can automate a wide range of tasks. Here are some examples of tasks commonly performed using shell scripts. So one common example of shell scripting is file and directory management, creating, copying, moving, renaming and deleting files and directory. And the next one is system administration, automating system maintenance tasks like backup and restore, log restoration, system monitoring, user management and software installation are common examples of system administration. Third one is data processing, parsing and manipulating text files, extracting information, performing data transformation and generating reports are some common examples of data processing using cell scripts. Fourth one is automation of repetitive tasks. Automating repetitive tasks such as batch file processing, repetitive data entry or running a series of commands in a specific sequence are some common examples of automation of repetitive tasks using shell scripts. Fifth one is application and service management. Starting, stopping and restarting applications or services, managing configuration files and monitoring process are some common examples of application and service management using shell script system monitoring and reporting collecting system information like cpu usage memory usage disk space and generating reports on alert basis on predefined defined 
thresholds are some common examples of system monitoring. Seventh one is network related tasks, automating network configuration, monitoring network connectivity and performing network diagnostics are some common examples of network related tasks. Web related tasks, automating website maintenance, crawling and scraping web content, interacting with web APIs and performing automated testing are some common examples of web, web related tasks using shell scripting. Task scheduling. Creating scheduled jobs or cron jobs to execute scripts at specific time or intervals are some examples of task scheduling using shell scripts. Interactive user interface. Creating command line interfaces, CLI or menus to interact with the user prompt for input and execute corresponding actions are some examples of shell scripts okay so let's see the course curriculum what are the elements in our course first one is the introduction video that you are watching right now second in sec second section we are going to see basic stuff shell in the third section we are going to see how to use variables in bash in the fourth section we are going to see strings in bash in the fifth section we are going to see arrays in bash in the sixth section we are going to do arithmetic calculation in bash in the seventh section we are going to see input output redirection and piping in bash in the eighth section we are going to see arguments in bash In the ninth section, we are going to see what are exit status in bash and how to use them. In the 10th section, we are going to see if else conditions. In the 11th section, we are going to see while loops in bash. In the 12th section, we are going to see for loops in bash. In the 13th section, we are going to see case statements in bash. In the 14th section, we are going to see functions in bash. In the 15th section, we are going to see how to integrate colors in our bash. In the 16th section, we have simple projects. And in the 17th section, we have some advanced projects for you. Okay, so there are 10 projects totally, 6 on the simple project and Four, four projects on the advanced project section and at last 18 section you will have a bonus lecture okay so i hope you like our course and uh, i invite you to take this course and upskill your career as a system administrator or anything where bash scripting is very helpful okay so let's meet on the basics of shell Hello guys, in this lecture, we are going to see what is shebang in Linux. So shebang basically looks like this, which is started by hash symbol and then exclamation mark and then slash then bin then slash and then a bash. Okay, so shebang is just a protocol to write shell scripts and basically uh, shebangs are written on the top of a shell script and it defines that uh, uh, hey you shell script you have to run with this interpreter let's see how sh uh, how did shebang came into existence it is basically made with two words first one is sharp and the second one is bang okay and we can see that it combine if we combine it it will we will get here sharp bang and from this sharp bang word a uh, word came here called shebang so basically shebang came in, into existence by this and uh, let's see on the terminal how all these things work okay so remember that we have created a file called hello world.sh now we are going to edit this with a nano text editor just write uh, nano and then write the file name hello, uh, hello underscore world.sh 
press enter the file will be opened now what we are going to do we are going to add a shebang here first let me add this so if you add this uh, nothing will be changed and the output will be same okay but uh, uh, if you are writing a big script like uh, uh, let's imagine that you have written uh, 200 or 300 lines of code uh, in a single file then it is very helpful to uh, like write this shebang uh, at the top of your shell script so th this is basically a a protocol of writing shell scripts okay so uh, let's save the script and run the script and let's see that what happens is there any change so as you can see here there is nothing has been changed in the output uh, but uh, what if i change the interpreter like instead of bash i like write with i use the python interpreter then slash python interpreter so if i now i save the script and if i run the script you can see that there is showing an error called bad interpreter so uh, in this case it is using bin slash python so it is not like suitable for uh, shell script so that's why it is showing that so now i'm going to make it as previous which is bash now if i run the script you can see that it is now normal so in this way uh, you have to write like shebang at the top of a shell script and let me also show you the location of like uh, bin slash bash okay means the bash file so i will go to this location slash bin and i will ls and grep use the grep command to find the bash file so this is the bash file that we have used in our interpreter okay so uh, this for this video guys let's meet on the next lecture hello guys in this lecture we are going to see variables in bash so a variable is a value that can change depending on conditions or on information passed to the program a variable in bash can contain a number a character or a string of characters let's see how to define a variable in bash so it is basically very simple you have to just write the variable name and after that you can write equals to sign and then the variables value okay so it is very simple and spaces are not allowed between variable equals to and hello or the value okay so let's see all these things practically on the terminal let's move to the terminal so we are on now the terminal and uh, first of all i am going to create a file called variables.sh and inside this file we are going to practice so first of all i will give here a shebang which is very important you should not skip this and after that i will write a comment here variables okay so uh, in shell scripts comments are declared by like using here a hash symbol okay and uh, the, as you are like thinking about this is also like starting with hash so it must be a comment but no it is uh, an exception means the shebang is just an exception to this comments okay first of all we are going to declare a variables name which is var in our case and after that we are going to give a equals to here and after that we are going to store a value so it will be hello okay and uh, now we have successfully declared a variable now we are going to call this variable to use it okay so i am going to use uh, this echo command and then i will write here dollar symbol and then i will write the variable's name as you can see here we have declared a variable var after the after the equals to we have stored the value this is the value for this variable so here you are using we are using echo command to call this variable so it can print the value of this variable so to like call a variable you have to first of all write here a dollar symbol and then you have to write here the variable's name and uh, after that i will show you i will save the script and i will run the script at here i have opened two terminals simultaneously so it will be easier so first of all we have to give here the executable permissions 
and now I am going to run this script. You can see that it has printed hello on the terminal and in this way uh, this works. So what what happens if I like uh, write here hello world. So uh, let's see what happens. First of all I will save the script and I will run here. Let me make this terminal a little bit smaller and this a little bit bigger. So as you can see here, it has like sh uh, showing command not found because you cannot store like a line into a variable. You can only store like a, a word or a number. You cannot store a line into a variable. For storing a line into a variable, there is another thing called strings, which we are going to discuss in later lectures. And uh, we are as of now, we are going to delete this. And uh, let me show you some more things if you write if you like uh, give here a space in between these variables which is like out of the rule and if I save the script and if I run here it is also giving like command not found so this is the thing that variables have a rule that you cannot give spaces in between this uh, uh, this line okay so I hope you understand the concept of variable. So one more thing that you can you can also change the variables value after it use. So if I write here like var is equals to word, okay, and then I like I call the variable once more. Let's see what happens. So if I run the cell script you would see that the variables value has been changed first of all it is printing hello and now it is printing world so what happens that after the use of a variable you can change its value this is one of the most uh, important thing in shell scripting so uh, like variables has a quite important part in our shell scripting so you must uh, like clear your concepts on it uh, once more we are going to change the variables value so I am going to write here var is equals to Vivek okay so it is my name so if I write here echo dollar var and save the script and here if I run the script now you can see that we have changed the variables value three no not three times we have changed the variables value two times okay so here you can change the variables value after its usage okay so this is for this lecture guys I hope you like this lecture and let's meet on the next lecture. Hello guys, welcome to this lecture and in this lecture we are going to see what are strings in bash. Okay. So bash string is a data type such as an integer or floating point unit. It is used to represent text rather than numbers. It is a combination of a set of characters that may also contain numbers. Let's see how to define a string in bash. You can just basically write str which is the string's name and after equals to you have to write two quotation marks, double quotation marks and then inside the double quotation mark you can write the string's value. Okay. So this is like similar to variables but the basic difference is you are just writing the value into double quotation marks. Okay. So let's see all these things practically and let's move to the terminal. Now we are on the terminal and uh, first of all I am going to create a file just uh, add here called strings.sh strings.sh okay and then uh, like I am going to first of all write the shebang here and after that I am going to write here a comment And after that I am going to declare a string here so string name will be str you can give the string name as str1 str2 str3 anything that you like okay rules for string and variables are same so I'm going, going to give the value for this string so we are going to store here a, a thing like hello like welcome to 
वेलकम टू वेलकम टू बैश स्क्रिप्टिंग ओके एंड नाउ वी हैव स्टोर्ड द स्ट्रिंग्स वैल्यू विच इज लाइक वेलकम टू बैश स्क्रिप्टिंग सो दिस इज द स्ट्रिंग्स वैल्यू सो एस टी आर वैल्यू इज वेलकम टू बैश स्क्रिप्टिंग एज यू कैन सी हेयर एंड वट वी इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कॉल दिस स्ट्रिंग्स वैल्यू देन यू हैव टू राइट हेयर इको देन डॉलर सिंबल एंड देन टू करली ब्रेसेस एंड इन साइड दैट यू हैव टू राइट हेयर एस टी आर ओके सो इट विल प्रिंट आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस एस टी आर ओके नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सेव दिस स्क्रिप्ट एंड वी आर गोइंग टू एक्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल गिव इट एक्सिक्यूटेबल परमिशन एंड देन वी आर गोइंग टू रन दिस स्क्रिप्ट now you can see that here it is like printing welcome to bash scripting so in this way strings works so uh, basically the difference between variables and string is that uh, at variable we can only store like one word okay and in strings you can store like uh, a line a series of line or a simple line you can store anything between these two quotation marks okay so after that there are uh, much more things in strings so we are going to see that so what if you want to like change a character a uh, character or word like from bash to shell like for that we are going to just write after this str and we are going to point that word that we are going to change in my case it is bash and i am going to change it with shell and now if i save the script and if i rerun the script here now you can see that uh, bash has been changed to shell so in this way you can manipulate uh, strings according to yourself and uh, let's see one more example like uh, if i want to change the two character with uh, hello okay so if i now save the script and here if i run the script now you can see that two has been changed to hello this is called string manipulation it is a very like good part and this is just uh, uh, like one advantage of using strings in your uh, shell scripts uh, what if you want to slice uh, some something from this whole line so what if i want to slice uh, from uh, only this part then uh, what i will do that i will write like this double colon and then after that uh, i will just count this welcome okay so i will count the like how many letters has been used so let's count that 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so there are seven letters so i am going to write here seven and if i save the script and run the script here now you can see that it has sliced the welcome part of this string and if you increase the number like at uh, 10 it will slice up to this welcome to okay if i just save the script and if i just rerun the script here you can see that it has sliced only welcome to part of this string and now you can also give range at uh, slicing uh to give range you need to like just write like this if i want to slice uh, uh, only this bash scripting part then what i i will do that i will write here 12 and then this symbol and then i will write here i will first of all count from here so this is the 12th position 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 25 so i will write here 25 and after that i will save the script and i will rerun the script here so there is one more thing that we have counted like wrongly so instead of 12 it will be 11 so you have to also count the spaces okay Sp uh, this is one space and if i re rerun the script here you can now see that it has like sliced the bash scripting part from here so you can also give ranges in slicing with uh, strings okay so in this way strings work and don't be confused with variables and strings there are just a small things in our shell scripting part 
we will understood all these things in the upcoming lectures when we are going to like build some projects uh, like projects are for clearing your doubts and uh, let's move to the next lecture hello guys in this lecture we are going to see what are arrays in bash so an array is a systematic arrangement of the same type of data but in shell script array is a variable which contains multiple values may be of same type or different type since by default in shell script everything is treated as a string and array is a zero based uh, that is indexing start with zero so let's see one example of an array so array can be like declared with uh, anything like uh, variables and after that you have to write equals to and then you have to write left parenthesis and you have to write the data in the array in my case i have written one two three four five and to close the array you have to write here right parenthesis okay so this is the basic usage of array and you can call the array using echo dollar array so all these things will be called so now let's see that how to get indexes in array how to get specific items from an array so arrays holds a very important part in our shell scripting that we are going to see so if you want to get the first item of the array you have to write like this dollar and then curly braces and then array and inside square brackets you have to write zero then you will get the first item of the array array holds a very important part in our shell scripting that we are also going to see in project section practically okay and then if you want to get the second item of an array then you have to write uh, uh, like this you have to write like first of all echo and then dollar and then inside curly braces you can write the array name of the array and uh, inside square brackets you can write one to get the second item of the array remember that in arrays indexing starts from zero okay so if you write like one then you will get the second item of array we are going to see all these things practically also so don't worry if you don't understand it so to get the third item of an array you can write here like this dollar and then curly braces name of the array and then inside uh, square brackets you can write two to get the third item of an array if you want to get the uh, like uh, all items of an array then you can write like this dollar and then inside curly braces you have to write array and inside square brackets you have to write at the rate symbol to get all items of an array and if you want to get all items indexes then you can write here like this dollar symbol inside curly braces you have to write exclamation mark and then name of the array and inside square brackets you have to write at the rate symbol so this is the basic usage of array and we are going to utilize it into our project section very much so let's move to the practical now we are on the terminal and we are going to practice arrays so for that i will create a file called array.sh and inside that i will write the shebang as usual and i will write here a comment arrays practice and after that i'm going to declare an array with name array okay and i will uh, like just write the data inside it after the equals to sign and inside the round brackets i will write here like here one two three four five so in this way i have written the data inside the array so the treatment of data is changed only okay don't be confused between variables strings and arrays
there are three type these are three types of uh, three types of way of storing data okay so if you want to call this array you can just write like this echo dollar inside curly braces you can write a double r a y and then inside square brackets like this you can write here if you write here zero and if i save the script and uh, if i just give the executable permissions for the script and if i run the script let me run once more so if i run the script then you can see that uh, it is giving me one which is the first item of the array so indexing basically starts from zero i will also write here i will write here the comment so it will not affect the shell script so i will write here the indexes like this is the one is denoted as zero and two is denoted uh, as one for three it's two four it's three and five it's four so in this way indexes start indexes okay so i have written like this indexes so in this way it works and as you can see that i have written here zero and it is printing one so in this way if i write here one then it will print two if i change the value save the script and rerun the script here you can see that we have get the value two and uh, if i just change the value from one to two save the script and if i run the script here you can see that it is giving me the value three in this way it works and uh, if you want to get all items from an array then you can use this at the rate symbol and if i save the script first of all if i run the script here now you can see that you have get uh, all these items from the array uh, there is one more method you can also use this asterisk symbol and if i save the script if i run it here you can get that the result is same but the uh, uh, like this is the difference okay and if you uh, want to get all the indexes of an array you can write like here at the rate and at the starting of this uh, uh, after this curly braces you can like write here uh, this uh, which is exclamation mark and if i save the script and if i run the script here you can get the indexes of the array so you can do with one more thing like if you want to see which item has which index you can write like this first of all it will print the items of the array and it then it will print this uh, indexes of the specified array if i uh, if i save the script and if i run the script here you can see that it is printing that one's index is 0 two's index is 1 three's index is 2 in this way it works so i hope you understand and clear the concept of array it will be like very useful in our upcoming lectures all these things all these data types so let's meet in the next lecture hello guys in this lecture we are going to see how to perform arithmetic calculations in bash so arithmetic calculations in bash are a very important part of shell scripting there will be only some basic examples of arithmetic calculations in this lecture okay so the first way to perform arithmetic calculation is this that you can declare a variable in my case i am declaring as cal cal and then after that a uh, equals to sign and then a dollar symbol and then two right and left parentheses and inside that you can uh, write your expression in this case i have written 7 plus 10 and then you can call the variables name and then it will print out 17 okay as you can see here we have called using the eco dollar cal command okay so let's move to the next way of doing arithmetic calculation so the second way to do arithmetic calculation is you can write a expr command and then you can uh, write here the expression 
in this case it is 7 plus 10 and it will uh, like print out the result into the terminal going to move to the third way to do arithmetic calculation so the third way is like this you can use the command echo and then you can write here between double quotation marks you can write here the expression and then after that you have to write here a pipe symbol and then you can write bc command which is specially made for doing arithmetic calculation in linux okay so let's see all these things practically on terminal let's move to the terminal so now we are on the terminal and first of all i will make a uh, like i will open a file using this nano text editor so for that i will write a nano and then arithmetic.sh so after that i will first of all give her the shebang and i will write here a simple comment and after that uh, first of all we are going to see the first example so i will declare a variable here called cal and then i will write here equals to and then i will write here a dollar symbol and then inside this two round brackets i will write my expression which is 7 plus 10 in my case you can change according to yourself after doing this i will call the variable using the echo command like this and if i save the script and then i will give here the executable permissions and then i will run the script now you can see that it has returned 17 in this case uh, like in this way you can also do many more fun uh, like calculations like minus so let's minus from 70 from 10 if i save the script and if i run the script here you can see that it is giving me 60 in the same way you can do also divisions uh, or multiplications let's see multiplication so if i save the script and then if i run the script you can see that it has multiplied and given the value 700 in this way you can also see uh, like do division i am showing you all the thing so you won't be confused Now you can see that it is giving me 70 in this way you can do your arithmetic calculations so uh, after that the next way is first of all i will comment these lines so it will not affect your shell script after that our next example was using the exr command it is very simple like 7 plus 10 if you write like this uh, and if you save the script and if I first of all I will clear the terminal and I, if I run that uh, run the script you can see that it is giving me 17 okay you can also store this value into a variable I am using cal1 and if I call the variable using the echo command cal1 and if I save the script I will run the script so there was a small mistake you have to also write here so uh, back quotes because it is a shell uh, like it, it is like basically running in a terminal okay so we have to just save the script and we are going to run the script now you can see that we have get the value after storing it into a variable and we can use the variables value at time to time according to yourself and one more thing that if you are using uh, the exdr command and if you are using this uh, multiplication sign then you have to also write here a backslash okay so first of all i am going to show you without the backslash what what error it does now you can see that it is showing uh, that unexpected argument so it is happening because this uh, this star symbol is a special character in bash and it must be like uh, we have to use this backslash after using this backslash in the terminal or the interpreter thinks that it is a normal character 
and now if I save the script if I run the script here you can see that it is uh, like working fine and in this way uh, so we have completed this example also now we are going to move to the bc command all the commands output is same but you should focus on the concept okay and uh, uh, now I am going to like first of all write this echo command and inside double quotation marks I will write here 7 plus 10 and I will uh, write here a pipe symbol and I will write here the bc command okay and if I save the script and run it here you can see that it, it is giving a 17 okay and similarly you can also store this value into cal number 2 which is uh, another variable that we have taken and we can just call the variable using this command echo dollar cal 2 if I save the script and if I run this using this so once again we have done the same mistake so we have to write here backticks because it is a shell command and after that we have we are going to just save the script and if I run the script once more you can see that we have get the value okay you can change uh, anything according to yourself your requirements and uh, you can do multiplication division addition and subtraction using all these things and there are also some more ways to do automatic calculations but I find these three ways very simple that's why I have like uh, put these things into this course there are some more ways okay you can research about more ways on to Google or on some website so I hope you understand automatic calculations in bash let's meet on the next lecture in this lecture, we are going to see input output redirection in Linux. So every program we run on the command line automatically generates like has three data stream. First one is standard input which is represented by 0, standard output which is represented by 1, standard error which is represented by 2. So standard input uh, is the data provided to the program by us and sec st second is standard output uh, like what program prints defaultly to the terminal standard error so a uh, standard error is what error message program prints defaultly to the terminal we are now going to see with a diagrammatic representation of these three things like uh, uh, you can see on the screen like uh, uh, here is a program uh, okay and uh, here is the standard input and we are giving the standard input to the program and if the program successfully runs then it will like return a standard output or it will if the program fails it will return standard error okay so let's see with some of the examples of input output redirection. So this is the ls command and if you write like this with a greater than symbol and output.txt it means that uh, you are like uh, redirecting all the like standard input to a file called output.txt and in the second example you can see that if you write ls and two greater than symbols uh, and write output.txt then it means that you are like uh, appending standard input not sta standard input standard output to a file and a third example you can see that if you write like ls and if you write two then uh, uh, then error.log it is like uh, uh, showing that uh, you are uh, redirecting standard error to a file so 2 is re 2 represent standard error and if you write like this ls and then 2 then greater than symbol then def slash null it represents that you are redirecting standard error to def slash null so def slash null is like a black hole so at last here is the ls and ampersand symbol which represents like uh, you are redirecting standard error and standard output
to dev slash null so dev slash null is like a black hole you can throw um, like useless thing at that useless output at that place okay and it will disappear completely and it will not be stored on your system so this for uh, like we are going to see all these things practically so let's move to the terminal so now we are going to see input output redirection here practically so what happens that if we if we give a like command to the terminal like this ls command or any command uh, let's think pwd command or ls command uh, you can see that the terminal has provided like uh, sorry not provided it it has returned some uh, some information okay so this information is called like uh, the first one that we have like given the this command pwd so it is called standard input which is given by us and the command and this information generated by the uh, terminal is called like standard output so standard input is uh, represented by 0 standard output is represented by 1 okay and there is one more thing which is called standard error so if we run uh, like uh, if we give a like unknown command which is not uh, like understood by the system like uh, any random thing then you can see that it is uh, like uh, returning command not found so it is called standard error so this is the uh, basic thing and let's uh, like see how to uh, like transfer standard error and uh, output so first of all i will clear the terminal and then if you uh, if i run this command ls then this greater than symbol and then this uh, output output.txt if we run uh, this command so uh, first of all i am going to run it without this so if i run the uh, ls command you can see that it has returned some uh, like files that are on present on the desktop directory if i want to transfer all this uh, like information to a file then i will uh, write like this first of all ls command this greater than symbol and then file name output.txt so if I write that, uh, write like this, you can see that we have supplied the standard input, and uh, uh, if we like here is one okay, but here is it it is not uh, like showing, but here it is one. If we like press enter, and if I cat this output dot txt, now you have seen that it has uh, it has it has not generated any output, and it has transferred its output to this output dot txt. So if I cat this file like this, and you can see that uh, it has it has like shown every uh, file which is inside this um, output.txt. So in this way, you can transfer your standard input to a file. If you want to append, means uh, write after this uh, uh, after this line output.txt. Uh, then you have to write like this let's uh, like run pwd command you have to write two greater than symbol and it is for appending on a on a file okay if you write like this and if you write like output.txt then uh, it has transferred all its standard input to the output.txt as, as you can see on the screen so if i now like cat this output.txt you would see that it has like appended at the last line this uh, the standard output of this pwd command here you can see that so this is uh, like appending uh, standard input to to a file and let's think that uh, first of all i will clear the terminal and let's uh, let's like uh, think that uh, here is a command like this ls command generates a standard output as you can see on the screen and there are no errors on, on this so if you write like ls then 2 2 means standard error so if there are any errors in the ls command then uh, what will happen that it will like transfer the error to error.logs so if i write like this so you can see that so I have a small syntax error here 
we don't have to give it a space just run it without a space now you can see that uh, here is a file error.log if we cat error.log there is nothing in the file because the ls command has uh, not generated any errors okay uh, as you can see here error.log and it has also or uh, it, it is also providing uh, like the standard output this ls command so uh, let's create an error so if you run an unknown command like this and if you write like 2 and this greater than symbol and then error.log we are transferring uh, all the errors to error.log so uh, let's press enter and see what happens so you can see that nothing has been printed to the screen and all the things are uh, like thrown in error.log now if we cat error.log you can see that here is our error okay so this was the error generated by this command as you can see here and one more thing that uh, you can also transfer standard error to null null means the black hole that I, we have already discussed so if you run the same command and if you don't want to like save into a, a different file then you can write like this dev slash null so let me first show you the location of dev slash null so if i go to dev slash null uh, not dev slash null we will go to dev and if i ls here are uh, so much files okay so we are going to find that null file so here as you can see that th this is the null file and what happens that if you uh, like output anything to this file means you give uh, anything any input to this file it will just uh, uh, like disappear from your machine so if you uh, press enter you would see that nothing has been printed here and uh, uh, we are not we have not supplied the any file so it has not on or uh, also transferred this error to any account, any file okay so in this way you can transfer standard error to a file and what if you uh, like want to transfer standard output and standard error to the null file uh, so uh, let's run this command ls and then if you write this ampersand symbol and uh, this greater than symbol so we are supplying this uh, all errors and output to this dev slash null file so now you could see that errors and uh, like standard input sorry standard output and standard error has been uh, like thrown to uh, dev slash null so in this way input output redirection works you have to also like uh, research on that and play with all these things then you would uh, able to learn linux so i hope you like this lecture and let's move to the next lecture in this lecture we are going to see piping in linux so what is piping like we are going to use this uh, symbol which is known as pipe command not command it is pipe symbol okay so we are going to use it uh, let's think that uh, first of all i am going to show you i have created a txt file called names.txt here are some uh, names of um, harry potter series so uh, these are the names okay so what if i want to like uh, like this command has generated a standard output okay this is a standard output and uh, what if i want to like uh, like i pass this standard output to a next command as standard input so what we are going to do we are going to use this pipe symbol to pass this cat commands output as uh, and uh, we are going to use a, uh, a command called wc dash l so it will count these lines okay so it will count and uh, show me how many lines are there in this names.txt so we are supplying uh, like it is generating a standard output and this command is taking this uh, cat command standard output as standard input okay so uh, this is the input this this all the names are input for this wc dash l command okay so for uh, like this we are using this uh, pipe pipe symbol 
and if you press enter now you see you could see that there are six lines here on this txt file so in this way this pipe command helps and we can also like use it with grep command grep and if you want to find some name like harry then it is showing me harry okay in this way you can mix different uh, different kinds of commands with each other and uh, you can increase your efficiency okay uh, that we are uh, that we have seen so there are uh, some commands like mkdir that cannot take uh, like standard input from a uh, different commands output like if i run this mkdir mkdir so it is like showing me some errors so for that we are going to use a command called xargs okay so uh, if you write like this xargs and then uh, uh, like write this command mkdir so what will happen that xagr command xagr is command will help this mkdir command to take the uh, standard output as standard input for mkdir command so if i press enter and I, I will show you here are the directories that are created by this mkdir command okay as you can see here this is the ron james lily Ginny, hagrid harry these are the uh, directories that are created by this this command okay so in this way rmdir which is the command for deleting directories is or can uh, can also not take standard input okay so what we are going to do we are uh, going to write here rmdir and we are going to delete all these directories here and if i just write this ls command now you can see that all the directories has been deleted so in this way you can utilize the the pipe symbol with uh, different kinds of mixing different kinds of commands with their input and output okay so uh this for this video guys i hope you understand the concept of piping in linux so let's meet on the next lecture so guys in this lecture we are going to see what are arguments in bash okay so arguments are inputs that are necessary to process the flow instead of getting input from a shell program or assigning it to the program the arguments are passed in the execution part of the script so let's see all these things practically what are arguments okay so let's move to the terminal now we are on the terminal and let's uh, see what are arguments in bash or shell scripting so what happens that uh, first of all let me create a file called arguments.sh okay and then i will write here a shebang i will write here arguments in bash okay so let me first of all uh, do uh, right here and then I will show you how it works. So if I write here echo dollar one, then what will happen that first of all let me save the script and if I run the script here first of all give me let me give here the script executable permissions. If I run the script here. If I run the script here you can see there is nothing printing but we have put here that there uh, equals echo command and then dollar one so what does dollar one means dollar one means that uh, what we are putting after the after the file name like uh, first of all we have written this uh, like we are executing the script and if we write here hello at the first place uh, if I press enter now you can see that it is printing hello okay so why it happens let me open the script and show you so it happens because we have written here echo and then we have supplied user input through uh, at the time of execution of the script okay so dollar one means uh, the the first argument that we have provided 
and the execution of the script now if we write here like echo dollar two and we see if we save the script and if you run the script and here we will write here hello and this is the first argument which is dollar one and this is the second argument which is dollar two if you press enter now it gets you can see that here it is printing hello and then word let me like open a tab and show you here you can see that it is showing us eco dollar one eco dollar two and here we have provided hello and then world so hello comes in the place of this dollar one and world comes in the place of this dollar two similarly if you change it and uh, like add here eco eco dollar three and save the script and if you execute the script here hello world with bash so let uh, let me first execute the script now you can see that it is not taking bash in the in the output because we have not provided dollar four okay we have only provided till dollar three so it will only take three arguments from the list okay so these are the three arguments and uh, arguments are very crucial part of shell scripting so you must uh, like carefully watch this lectures and here you can see that this is the first argument which is dollar one and here is the second argument which is world and here it is dollar two and here is the third argument which is with here it is dollar three and if we similarly write here eco dollar four and save the script and if i rerun the script now you can see that it is printing hello world with bash okay it is printing the full line that we have provided in this way arguments work and you can uh, like supply like user input at the time of execution of the script okay so this is the basic way this is for this video guys i hope you understand this lecture and let's move to the next lecture hello guys in this lecture we are going to see what are exit status in bash and why are these important so the exit status is an integer number for the bash shells shells purpose a command which exits with a zero exit status has succeeded a non zero between 1 to 255 exit status indicates failure it if, if a command is not found the child process created to execute it returns a status of 127 let's see how to print exit status after executing a command you can print exit status using the command echo dollar question mark after executing a command so dollar question mark is a built uh, built in shell variable which is used to see the exit status of the previous command that's it, that is run on the terminal or on sc shell scripts okay So after all this, we are going to see exit code number, their meaning and examples. Okay. So first one is the zero, which means that if exit status is zero, it means that the command has run successfully and its example is running PWD command. After that, the exit code number is one, which is uh, which which meaning is catch all for general errors. You can uh, take the example as cal is equals to dollar and uh, okay and if the exit status is 2 then it is indicates that misuse of shell built-ins it means that you can it can be an empty function also 126 exit code number indicates that command invoked can't be executed like uh, if you run this command or terminal slash dev slash null then you will get to see that if the exit status is 127 then it indicates command not found means if you run a non uh, a command which is not present on your system then it will like uh, print uh, like it will give the status uh, status if the it will give the exit status as 127 example is ld okay hello guys so we are now on the terminal 
and now we are going to see what are exit status practically so what happens that after execution of a of a of any command uh, the shell generates a exit code okay so it is also known as exit code number which we have seen in the theory section of this video and now if i clear the terminal if i run a command here pwd and if i write here like this echo dollar then question mark so echo is basically a command and dollar question mark uh, is a like it is a variable built in variable for like checking the exit status so if i press enter now you can see that it is showing me zero why because the previous command pwd has been executed successfully if i write here like anything else and then if i run this command then you can see that the exit status is something different than zero so the zero means uh, like a successful command which has been run previously so the next uh, so we have seen the zero exit code means the exit code number zero now we are going to see exit code number one so exit code number one indicates catch all for general errors like if we declare a variable here cal is equals to dollar and if you write like this one divided by zero and uh, if you then check the exit status it is giving me one why because uh, uh, this is like a general error because one cannot be divided by zero okay here it is also showing an error division by zero error token is zero okay so it is not possible so that's why it is giving me the exit status one here and uh, after that uh, the next exit status that we are going to discuss which is two so if you if i create here a empty function uh, functions have a different concept i will tell you all about the functions in some different lectures so let's uh, so basically this is a function okay it is not a proper function functions uh, generally are built on shell script or you can also create a function here but for the uh, ease of this lecture we are going to create this function here so if i run this command and if i then check the exit status then you can see that it is not zero it is two so it indicates that misuse of shell built-ins okay so this is a like direct misuse of cell built-ins so let's move to the next one which is 126 means exit code number 126 so if i run like this dev slash null if i uh, like press enter then if i just check the exit status you can see that it is showing 126 exit status why it is showing because command invoke cannot execute it because this command cannot be executed because uh, if you check the permissions of this file you can see that it cannot be executed by any any user on this machine okay there are no executable permissions and this is not a regular file this is like a black hole that we have already seen so if you run this you will get 126 exit status and if i run here some unknown commands like ld or anything you can see that the exit status is 127 why it is happening because it is a like this command is not founded in your system or it can also be the configuration errors like if the if the directory is not set in the path okay then uh, then also this exit status can display so this for this video guys i hope uh, you understand this lecture and uh, uh, you must be thinking that why we are studying this exit status so i i will uh, i am going to tell you that this is a very important part of shell scripting and we are going when we are like going to build projects like uh, big 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 projects then we are going to use this exit status very much so this is very important and you should clear concepts on this exit status if you found any kind of like difficulties then you can just message so let's move to the next lecture. 
Hello guys, in this lecture, we are going to see if else statements in bash. So the if else statement in bash scripts allows creating conditional cases and responses to specific code results. The if else condition conditional helps automate a decision making process during a program. Okay. So there are three conditions that can be tested on uh, like if else statement first one is mathematical comparison string comparison and file related, file system related comparisons let's see the syntax of if else statements so if else statements start with if keyword and inside two square brackets you can write your condition at the next line you have to write the then keyword and after that you have to you can write your command and after that you can write the else keyword and then the command in the next line and to close the if else statement you have to write the fi keyword okay now we are going to see diagrammatic representation of if else statement so here the if else statement starts and first of all if it checks the expression the condition and if the condition is true then what happens that it goes to the if branch okay and it like uh, uh, stops the if else statement stops and if the statement like the, if the expression is false then what happens that it go like the statement goes into else branch okay and it then stops now we are going to see conditions in if else statements so i have created a chart here so first condition is like equals to operator so you can write like this inside square brackets uh, equals to equals to or dash eq for like equals to and in the second if you want to like check for not equals to then you can write like this exclamation mark and then equals to or dash ne okay in the third condition you can check less than okay so you can write like this dash lt it is the short form of less than and the next dash gt which is called greater than okay and after that here is the ge means dash e ge operator which uh, which specifies like uh, greater than or equals to okay so these are uh, these are all for mathematical comparisons in if else statement so here you can see that dash le means less than or equal to you can write like this okay and at the last it is like double square brackets and after that you can write here equals to and then the tilde sign and this is this operators are used for regex matching so you if you want to match some regular expressions then you can uh, like use this kind of operators so let's move to the terminal to see all these things practically hello guys now we are going to practice all these things practically and first of all i will create here a file with the command nano if sh and here at the top i will write the shebang okay and here i will write here a comment if else statement okay and here we are going to first of all see the syntax of if else statement so at the starting we have to write the if keyword and inside square brackets you have to write the condition okay and then at the next line you have to write a then keyword and after the then keyword you can write your command here okay and after the command you can write the else keyword and after the else keyword you can write the command okay and to close the if else statements you have to write the fi keyword which is just the reverse of if keyword okay as you can see on the screen after that i am going to delete all these lines so we can do our practical uh, application so uh, as we have already seen that it uh, like if else statement start with the if keyword and inside square brackets you can write here like 1 is equal to 1 you have to also like write here spaces otherwise uh, it will occur an error okay and after that you have to write here a then keyword then and
and uh, inside the command section you can write here like this one is equal to one okay so if there is the this statement will be true then uh, this line will print equal spelling is wrong and uh, uh, then uh, we are going to write here else keyword then we are going to write here echo and here if the statement this statement is, is false then it will print out like this one is not equal to given number okay and we have to also close our uh, like if else statement so here you, we will write here like fi keyword okay and now if i save the script and if i run uh, run the script now you can see that it is printing one is equal to one okay so in this way it works it basically works and uh, let's see some more things you can also put a number into a variable like if i create here a do uh, like here a variable called var1 and inside that i have put i will put here one and then i will write here dollar var1 then it will also work the same then uh, as you can see that it is working the same one is equal to one and uh, like you can also change here this double equals to sign if you prefer then you can use this uh, dash eq uh, operator okay which is also means equal to okay so if i save the script if i run the script that you can see that there is no, no changes here if i now open the terminal once more i will delete here the variable you can use variables now i will uh, write here 10 and here i will write here dollar one so we will take imp input from the like at the time of execution of the script okay so i will write here if this condition is true then it will print like this the given argument is equals to 10 otherwise if the given argument is like greater than 10 then it will uh, greater than or less than 10 it will uh, like print out like this meant is the given argument is Ten. okay so in this way if the uh, here we will provide the the number at the time of input of this uh, at the time of execution of the script and if the condition is like if this number is equal to 10 then this line will print okay and if uh, if the given number is not equals to uh, this 10 10 number then it will print here the given argument is greater than or less than 10 so if we save the script and i will first of all clear the terminal and if you run the script like this and if i write here 10 now you can see that it is like printing the given argument is equal to 10 if i provide here something else like 11 then it is like telling that the given argument is greater than or less than 10 okay so uh, the conditions can change according to uh, the operators that we have used like there is uh, one more operator which can be used like this not equals to so this is the not equals to operator so we have to also change our condition then okay so if the if the condition is true like uh, if the given input is not equals to 10 then it will print the given argument is not equal to 10 otherwise it will print here like this
otherwise if the statement is false then it will print the given argument is equals to 10 if i now save the script i am going to clear the terminal and now if i write here 10 you you would see that the given argument is equals to 10 okay and if i write here like 12 like 112 then it is uh, telling me that the given argument is not equals to 10 okay so in this way you can take the use of equals to not equals to operator okay so not equals to operator can also be used like this with the an e keyword okay you can also make the use of greater than operator like it is defined by dash gt okay means hyphen gt and uh, we will change the arguments so if the argument is true uh, if the number is like greater than 10 then it will print here the number the given argument is greater than or equals to 10 and if the statement is false we will write here the given argument is less than 10 okay and if you run the uh, the script now you can see that if we provided 10 then here you can see that the given argument is greater than or equals to 10 okay and if you provided a like small number like 1 then it is telling that the given argument is less than 10 so in this way you can make uh, this okay and first of all i will clear the terminal and i will open the script once more and there is one more uh, like operator which is ge so g stands for greater than or equals to so uh, the statement will be same okay it will not uh, like differ and if we run the script once more then it is telling me the given argument is less than 10 so the argument is this one okay and if you write here 100 then it is like printing that the given argument is greater than or equals to 10 okay so in this way you can make the use of this uh, like uh, mathematical comparison between different kind of numbers Okay, so hello guys we are now on the terminal and we are going to do if else string comparison so for that we have to first of all create here two strings first string name will be str1 and the strings value will be hello world okay and then the next string will be str2 and its its value will be also same okay hello then world okay and we will write here a, a like if else statement first we will provide if keyword and then inside square brackets you have to write like this first of all dollar and uh, you have to write in, in between double quotation marks and you have to write here uh, dollar str1 and if it is like equals to you have to write here like this str2 so if the both strings are equals to then uh, what will happen then then it will print here like echo both the strings are equal okay otherwise if the statement is false if the strings are not equal then it will print here like this strings not equal okay and we will close this uh, script with fi keyword and now it is uh, ready and now if you run the script here is a like syntax error let's see what is the syntax error here we have to write else keyword okay and now if you run the script now you can see that both the strings are equal it is printing because you can see that both the strings string number one and string number two have the same words and if i just change one word from here let's see what happens you have to save the script and execute the script now you can see that it is printing strings are not equal why because we have changed a, a little this we have removed the o from here okay 
that's why okay and we can also like uh, do here you can also take the use of dash eq operator and it is just similar to the mathematical operations that we have done and uh, here are some like errors on the line 10 so it's better to use equals to sign okay equals to equals to sign so uh, this for this video guys i hope you understand string comparison in if else statements let's move to the next lecture now you are going to see file conditions and these are for testing files okay so the first is dash e operator with the file name and it tests for the file exists or not in the second one which is dash r and followed by the file name which is it will test for readable files and uh, at the third one which is dash h then the file then if you write like this you can check for sim links and in the fourth if you write dash d and then the file you are checking for the directory if the directory presents or not at the fifth one which is dash w you are like checking for writable files in the sixth one if you write like dash s then you can you are you can see file size less than zero bytes and if you write like this dash f file then it check for the file exists or exists or not so let's move to the terminal to see how all these things work practically so we are now on the terminal and we are now going to say, see the file conditions in if else statements okay so uh, first of all uh, like if you want to check that a file exists or not then you can uh, just uh, like use like this first of all you have to specify the if if keyword and then inside square brackets you can write like this dash e so first of all see what files we have now so we have many files let's take this file array.sh and if we open the script and you can also store file name into this variable so i will uh, store it into here and then you have to specify the then keyword and if the file will be present then it will echo i will write here uh, like dollar file is present in the current directory okay and if in case the file is not present like uh, if i let's change the file name like let's make it hello.sh and then if the file is not present then it will echo here like dollar file is not present in the current directory okay in this way it will work okay and we will specify here the fi keyword okay and uh, let me also write here what is the usage of this uh, dash e so it will be better to all of you to understand so i will write here dash e option used to check that file is present in the not okay this will be like very helpful for you okay so here is a small spelling mistake so if i just save the script and now let me give the give it the like executable permissions uh, like like this and i will clear the terminal and i will write here like this i will uh, like execute the script and you can now see that hello.sh is not present in the current directory okay 
and in case you make this file with the touch command like this hello.sh and if you rerun the script then it is like printing out hello.sh is present in the current directory so this is the basic use case of this command and i hope you understand this and uh, now we are going to see sim links so what are sim links like uh, if i like here is a file called hello.sh and uh, uh, if i go to here desktop then you have to first of all go to here scripts and then you have to like open it from here like hello.sh and uh, uh, after creating sim links what you will find that uh, at here at the desktop you uh, you uh, you will get an icon here and uh, from there you can access this script directly this hello.sh directly so uh, now we are going to see that how to do that so first of all you have to create here a sim link with the ln command with dash s option and uh, first of all you have to go to your desktop directory and then we have to write here like this first of all i will tell terminal so we are going to create a sim link with the, this command ln with the option s and now we are going to specify the full path okay means absolute path of the script that we are going to uh, create sim link so i will write like this slash home slash vivek and then i will write here desktop and then i will write here shell so scripts were the directory and now we are going to write here hello.sh and here we are going to write the name of the script here you can uh, give anything as you wanted and just press enter if we now see in the directory here is a sim link and if you open this file you will get to see that this is the same file that is present at here at the scripts directory okay so this both are the same files with uh, nothing into it and we are going to test this kind of sim links okay we have to like uh, use this option which is dash h okay this is used for testing sim links and uh, everything will be same uh, but these things will be uh, like nothing will be change only this will change okay because we are now testing for sim links i will also like make this h okay now we are going to just save the script and now i'm going to go to this uh, uh, desktop directory because here is this uh, like this sim link is present and if you check this file using the file command you can now see see that is it is the symbolic link to this location okay and now i'm going to run our script with the bash command you can also use this bash command okay and now i'm going to specify the directory and then i am going to specify our file which is ifelse.sh and now if i just uh, press enter now you could see that here it is telling that hello.sh is present in this directory okay and uh, i have to change one thing not at here uh, so so if you delete this file with the rm command now if i run the same script like this first of all bash command and then the directory then this is the file and now if i just uh, press enter now it is like telling me that hello.sh is not present in the current directory so this is very simple okay and now i am going to go back to our directory and i am going to open our file like this okay and now the uh, the uh, the next thing is uh, like we can also put the file using our arguments so you can 
we can just like write here dollar one so we don't have to provide the file name at here you can uh, run the script and get the file name here from at the time of execution of the script okay now we will check for readable writable and executable files so for checking for readable files you have to use this option dash r and uh, let me check change this line so i will write here dash r is option is used to check readable permissions of a file okay so we will check for that and i will also like um, make it i will also cha change this echo lines readable file is readable uh, if the condition is true then it will like print out file is readable otherwise it will print out otherwise it will not uh, like it will print out uh, the current file is not readable so I am going to save the script and I am going to just uh, uh, like first of all check the permissions of the files like like this file you are going to test with this file hello.sh that they have created and now you can see that everyone has the readable file readable permissions so i am going to run this script with this and i am going to put the file name as hello.sh okay uh, now i have to change one thing from here like we have to write here dollar one i have forgotten that thing one okay and now if you run this uh, script it is telling that hello.sh is readable okay in this way you can also check uh, file permissions and you can also create a whole like uh, whole script to check readable writable and executable permissions okay and the next one is uh, like writable permissions so dash w is used to check uh, like writable permissions and i'm going to change this line dash w option is used to check writable permissions of a file and i am also going to uh, like change it writable okay so in this way now if i save the script now in the here you can see that the file is the current file which is hello.sh is also writable so i'm going to clear the terminal and i'm going to run the script so you can see that hello.sh is writable from here okay and if we run the same script uh, at the root directory let let's check let's first of all check some files like if we go to this usr directory if we ls at the bin directory using ls-la so if we check this file let's see what happens what is the results we are getting so i will write like i will uh, specify the absolute path as you can see here uh, i will also first of all clear the terminal and i will uh, run it with bash and then home rake script not save desktop scripts ifs.sh and i will paste the file here now you can see that the this file which is z j uh, decode it is not writable okay so it is giving the current uh, correct results now i'm going to go back to our directory okay scripts i hope you understand the concept okay and now i'm going to uh, 
uh, go to the executable part of the script and uh, I'm going to just cha change this line this word okay this letter like uh, I will add here dash x dash x represent uh, which is used to check executable permissions executable permissions okay so now if I save the script and run the script once more uh, we are going to uh, use this file as a example as we are already doing this and if I run the script with this this file which is hello.sh now you can see that it is uh, like printing out hello.sh is not executable okay and let's uh, give the permissions to this file now you can see that hello.sh is now executable okay now we are going to run the uh, run the same script now it is telling that hello.sh is executable okay in this way you can also test uh, different kinds of permissions and these things okay and uh, now the next thing is like uh, which is directories so first of all i am going to create here a directory with the mkdir command directory name will be test and uh, we are going to open that script and if you want to check a file is a directory or not you can just use this dash d option and I'm going to delete this line And I'm going to add here not a directory okay and I will save the script and uh, I'm going to clear the terminal and uh, I will write like this if else and then I will write the directory name now you can see that it is telling that test is a directory let's see using the ls command here you can see that test is a directory as you can see that if I delete this uh, directory with the rmdir command and then I will make a file same as test as you can see here this is the test file uh, and uh, if I run the script once more if else.sh and then I am going to specify the directory name it is telling that test is not a directory we are going to use this uh, uh, file conditions very much in our upcoming projects okay so this is very important part of shell scripting and uh, the next thing is uh, like we have to determine a file size if a file size is like less than zero bytes then uh, uh, we are going to check that for using that uh, So by mistake I have not provided here the dash d option let's provide it and now I am going to once more run the same script it is telling that it is not a directory okay and if I make here a directory using this mkdir command let's remove this test file create a directory and run the same script now it is telling that uh, test is a directory okay so in this way it works out so this is for this video guys I hope you enjoyed and uh, learn something new in shell scripting and uh, let's move to the next lecture hello guys in this lecture we are going to see what are while loops in bash okay so let's see first of all the definition the condition for a while loop is a list of one or more commands and the commands to be executed while the condition remains true and placed 
between the keywords do and are so let's see the syntax of while loop okay how like while loop is written on our shell scripts so it starts with the while keyword and between square brackets we have to write the condition and then after that a do keyword and then the command and then to close the while loop we have to use the done keyword let's see the diagrammatic representation of while loops so first of all here the while loop starts okay and after that it tests the condition and then if the condition is false the while loop here stops or it ends okay and after that if the condition is true then what happens that the while loop executes okay means the loops body executes okay then it goes back to test the condition and if the condition is again true then it will again execute the loop and if the condition is false it will like uh, stop the while loop okay now we are going to see how to create nested while loops means we can add also if else statement inside while loop so we will write the while loop and then the if else condition so you can write many things inside a while loop a if else uh, condition for loop while loop until loop anything that you want okay so in the given example here you can see that we have written if else statement inside a while loop okay so i think you understand all these things now we are going to see all these things practically so let's move to the terminal so now we are on the terminal and now we are going to practice while loop so i will create here a file called like while dash loop dot sh okay and now i'm going to give here the shebang i will write here while loop okay so the basic syntax of while loop uh, basically looks like this as we have already seen it Uh, which starts with the while keyword and it goes with two uh, square brackets and inside the square brackets we have to write here the condition and here we cannot uh, like we have to give here a space between the condition and brackets and then we have to write the do keyword and then we can write here the, our command okay and then at last uh, if you want to close the while loop you can uh, like just write like this done keyword okay so this is the basic like uh, syntax of while loop and now i am going to delete these things and i am uh, going to show you a simple while loop okay so for that it will be a while loop will be increment uh, till 10 okay so i will write i will create a variable here var let's make it num is equals to 1 okay and we the one number will be incremented to the tenth okay i will write here like this dollar num is less than 10 and then i will provide here the do keyword and then i will provide here the echo then dollar num okay and then i will write here the done keyword and now i will explain you what is this uh, what does the code means uh, here the while loop starts first of all this is a variable that we have created and its value is 1 and there, this is the while loop this is the while keyword from where the while loop starts and here are the two square brackets and inside this square bracket this is the condition like uh, we are getting this one here okay so at first uh, like uh, when we run our while loop here is the one number okay and uh, what happens that after creating uh, like here it checks that uh, one is less than 10 so it will go to here and print out this number which is one okay 
and it will print out till 10 okay uh, so i have already told you that after the usage of uh, like uh, a variable we can increment or change the value of that variable so this concept we are using here so for incrementing the value of this variable we have to write like this let var plus plus it will increment the variable uh, by one okay so what will happen that after the execution of this uh, while loop at one time uh, the variable will be two so after first increment like after printing one it will become two and after printing two it will become three and after printing three it will become four like this it will go till like uh, like uh, uh, 10 okay so let's make the value here like one and if I save the script now I will give it executable permissions and now if I run the script here while loop.sh now you can see that it is not incrementing it is just printing the values so we have done a small mistake I think so so let's make uh, let's like change it and uh, uh, make it as like this So the uh, mistake was that uh, I have put here var and it will be num okay so uh, this is the variable that will be incremented here and now if I press enter if I run the script now you can see that it has printed till 9 why because we have like like given here the condition dash lt which means that uh, if the number is less than 10 then only you you have to print the number and uh, when the number reaches 10 it like stops the while loop and uh, if you want to print 10 then you can use this like less than equal to sim uh, like uh, option and if i save the script now if i run the script now you can see that it has printed till 10 okay so uh, like we have like studied all these things in the previous lecture so here is the use case okay now I will clear the terminal here. Sorry for that. I will open the script once more. And if you want to print till uh, like 100, then you can also do that. Just uh, make it 100 and just run the script. Now you can see that it has printed till 100. I will clear the terminal and let me explain once more like uh, first of all this is the variable which is num and the while, when the while loop starts at here here the nums variable means the num, this dollar num become 1 and it check that 1 is less than or equal to 10 or like 100 so it is obvious that it is uh, like less than 100 so what happens that it goes here and the variable prints, uh, prints out okay so echo commands print this variable and after printing 1 um, after printing one this num variable becomes two because we have like written here let num plus plus so num plus plus means increment the variable by one okay so this was the simple con concept of while loop and now we are going to see where we can use while loops okay so uh, I will save the script and I will show you that here is a here is a names.txt and if I open this file names.txt here are some names okay and uh, I want that uh, a serial number will be added before the names okay so what I will do that I will first of all open the script now I am going to do that and for that uh, like uh, we have to like start like this while First of all, we have to like just cat that uh, file, which is names.txt, and the main use case of while loop is to read commands or inputs from a file. Okay, so that uh, that is the thing that we are going to do. That first of all, we are like just getting the 
output from this name.txt and then we are passing to while loop so for that we are going to write her while read line so we are uh, doing here three things uh, we are doing here three things first one we are using while loop and this is the read command that we are going to use so it will read line by line every name so if i run this command at here now you can see that this is peter this is john so what this line will do that it will like uh, first of all read this peter okay it will first of all read this peter line and then it will uh, like paste that uh, peter into this line variable okay so this is a variable that we are uh, uh, like using here okay then we are going to write here do and then uh, i will write here echo dollar num so we have to also create the num variable so i will write here num is equal to 1 okay and then we are going to write here a dot because uh, uh, after one a dot will be there and after dot there will be peter okay and after that i will write here line okay and then i will increment the value of num so i will write here let num plus plus and then i will write here keyword done to close the while loop okay so in this way let's uh, let's first of all check the output of this command so i will like write here dot slash while loop dot sh i think something uh, is not good so i will just remove this space from here okay oh sorry i am uh, like given here a mistake i have to write it in small letters because uh, this variable is also in small letters okay so i will like uh, save the script and if i execute the script right now you can see that before it was looking like this peter john without any numbering now i have put numbering before every name 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay till 10 and if you want to add a hyphen here that thing you can also like do uh, by just writing here hyp this is the variable and i will use here a hyphen let's make it in between double quotes and uh, here after a space i will write here dollar hyp okay so this is the hyphen that uh, this is the hyp variable and uh, not this is not now a variable this becomes string because it becomes in double quotation marks and now if i save the script and i will run the script now you can see that a hyphen has been added after every line so this is the basic use case and if you have not understand till yet i will understand i will make you understand once more like first of all we have let's like let's uh, forget about this hyphen variable okay and this okay so uh, what happens that here we have created uh, a num variable with the value 0 and after that we have written here like cat names.txt so what happens that uh, this file this names.txt has been displayed okay okay and after that what happens that uh, first of all it reads the first line and then it it puts that value into this line variable and uh, we are printing here echo dollar num means num means one okay and then after a dot and then dollar line means peter okay this peter and after that it increments the value of dollar num okay so it becomes two and uh, our while loop goes to this john okay and uh, after that it it uh, like prints prints out uh, dollar num okay means two and then it print out the line uh, it also print out the dot and it's print out the line means uh, uh, line means like uh, this john okay it prints like this and uh, like uh, when the uh, when the names of txt like overs it also like exit the while loop okay so this is the basic concept of uh, while loop now we are going to move to 
infinite while loop so i'm going to delete everything from here and i'm going to write here infinite while loop just like first of all i will create here a variable num1 and then i will write here while true do echo dollar num and then it will increment the value of this num variable so i will write here num plus plus and then i will write here done keyword so it uh, so like the while loop will never stop incrementing and it will print uh, like every number starting from 1 to infinite let's see that practically so i will exit the script and i will clear the terminal if i run the script you can see that it is printing infinite numbers and it will never stop until the system uh, like uh, systems ram or cpu overs i will just stop this and uh, I will go here once more in our script and there is one more way to create infinite while loop you can also write like the like this uh, this colon symbol and then to save the script it will work the same okay so it is working the same in this way you can also create infinite while loops and while loops are uh, like basically used for like reading input from a given file okay so this is for uh, this video guys on while loop i hope you have cleared your concepts on while loop if you are still missing something you will clear all your concepts in the project section so you must watch the project section that i have built okay so let's move to the next lecture hello guys in this lecture we are going to see for loops in bash so let's see the definition first of all a bash for loop is a bash programming language statement which allows code to be repeatedly executed a for loop is classified as an iteration statement that it that is it is the repetition of a process within a bash script okay so let's see the syntax of for loops so for loop starts with the keyword for and then the arguments mean the variable name and then in keyword and then the list of items and after that in the second line it is a do keyword we have to write that and the third line we have to write the command that we are going to execute okay and to close the while loop you have to write this keyword done and the while loop will be closed so let's see the diagrammatic representation of for loops so here the for loop starts and it goes to the condition and if the condition is true then the statements executes okay and if the, uh, there is any updates on the for loop then it makes the updates and once more it checks the condition and if the condition is now false it like ends the loop and if the condition is true it like rerun the loop so in this way for loops uh, like work and uh, let's see all these things practically on the next lecture on the terminal now we are on the terminal and we are going to practice for loop okay so for loop basically uh, like first of all i'm going to create a file for for loop.sh and inside that i will write here the shebang then slash bash i will write here for loop practice okay so we are going to practice for loop so the basic uh, uh, structure of for loop looks like this for args in list so i have like written here the for keyword and then this is the variable name okay which is args and you have to also write this in keyword and here you will put your list okay so then uh, you have to write here then say in the second line you have to write here done uh, do keyword and inside this you can write your commands and then you can write here the done keyword so this is the basic structure of for loop okay 
now i am going to uh, like show you some practical examples so it starts from for and then i will take a variable i named i and in so we have to give here a list so i will write here the list 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay so this is the list okay uh, and it will iterate through every element of this list means uh, first at first place the variables i's value will be 1 and after the loops complete one time then this i's variable value will be 2 and in this way it will iterate through every element of this for loop and here we can write here equal dollar 1 not 1 i and then we can write here done keyword to like close the script and uh, let me once more explain you what will happen in this for loop so here the for loop starts and what will happen that first at first place uh, this i value will be will become one this and it will echo at here and after one loop it will like go to this two and it will echo here and after second loop it will go to this 3 and it will also echo in this way it will like cover all these elements of this list and now I'm going to save the script and I'm going to give it executable permissions and now I'm going to run the script for loop.sh now you can see that here it is like uh, printed all these elements of the of the list okay and i am going to open the script you can also like run here commands okay so uh, let me show you we have this names.txt at here so if i cat this file names.txt we have already used this file in uh, in some previous lectures so i am going to use it once more we are going to utilize this file so we can also run here commands into for loop by uh, writing backticks and then we can write here cat names.txt okay now i am going to save the script and i am now going to execute the script now you can see that every list uh, every item of this uh, file has been printed out okay So after that, you can also create a array. Like if I write here a r r, and inside this I will write the elements of the array. So I will write here Mercury. So if we write like this for i in then dollar then the array name which is arr and uh, we are going to use this at the red symbol to print all these items okay so now if i save the script and uh, execute the script here now you can see that every planet has uh, like printed here okay now i am going to clear the terminal and you can do one more thing let me first of all comment it out and I will write like this you can also like give user input at the time of execution of the script like this dollar four dollar five so if you write like this this will be the first argument that will be uh, like supplied by us this is the second argument third fourth fifth okay now I'm going to save the script and if I run the script once more and I will write here Vivek then it will print only my name because uh, we haven't uh, we haven't given any input for these uh, four, four ones okay we have only give the input for this dollar one so dollar one comes here and the variables become dollar one means Vivek means i's value will become vivek and here this will be 
uh, like print it let me uh, exit the script and if i add some more lines like peter harry potter like this and i will also write here snape if i now press enter now you can see that it has printed all these words here and now if you uh, add one more thing like uh, ron it will not print ron because we haven't defined it here we haven't defined it like dollar six at here okay so in this way for loops work we are going to use this for loop while loop and if else statements very much practical lectures of like projects now i am going to show you how to create an infinite for loop so for that i have to first of all create a variable with num uh, named num now we are going to write here for and then this double square brackets and double this uh, semicolon and then we are going to write here do keyword and then we are going to echo the num variable okay we can write like this num echo uh, dollar num and now we can like write here like increase the value of the dollar num after every execute every time the loops executes so i am going to write here num plus plus to increment its, its value and then i am going to write here done keyword and i am going to save it and exit it out from here now we are going to run the script one mo once more and uh, now you can see that the loop will like run infinite times okay until we stop or the system uh, resources overs i am going to uh, like press control plus c to to stop the loop and uh, this is for this video guys in the for loop section i hope you understand it and uh, we are also going to do some uh, like quite good projects on shell scripting so you must uh, like watch that lectures so let's move to the next lecture hello guys welcome to this lecture and in this lecture we are going to see case statements in bash so let's see the definition of case statements so the case con constructs is the shell scripting analog to switch in C or C++, it permits branching to one of a number of code blocks. Uh, like it depends on conditions, like uh, conditions test, or it serves as a kind of shorthand for multiple if if else statements. Okay, and is an appropriate tool for creating menus. Let's see the syntax of case statements. First of all, case statements start with the case keyword, and after that, you have to write the variable name inside two, uh, not two, inside quotation marks, double quotation marks, and after that, you have to write in, and then at the le next line, you have to write the condition one in between uh, two quotation marks, and then a bracket, and then the command that we want to execute. At uh, the next line, you can write the condition two inside double quotation marks and parenthesis and then command that you are going to execute and then at the last to close the case statement you have to write the ESAC keyword which is just the reverse of case keyword okay and uh, we are going to see all these things practically so let's move to the terminal now we are on the terminal and we are now going to practice case statements so so first of all, I'm going to create here a file called case.sh and now I'm going to write here the shebang then slash bash and then I'm going to write here case, okay? And after that, uh, case statement start with this case keyword and then the variable inside double quotation marks. So I am um, taking it as var so it is just only the syntax okay and here is the condition between this quotation marks 
okay and after that we have to write here write parenthesis and then you can write here the command okay and after the first condition you have to also write double semicolon to close out this first condition okay i will also make it as condition one and then you have to provide here the uh, second condition with the condition number two and then you can write here the right parenthesis and then you can write here the command and at here you can write uh, you have to write this double semicolon and then to close the case statement you have to write the isac keyword which is just the opposite of case okay so this is the general syntax of our case statements and uh, in the theory section i have missed this semicolons so just ignore that on theory section but uh, now it is like here okay so now i am going to like create a case statement now i am going to prompt for uh, like user input okay so i will write here echo enter your name okay and then i will read this input and make it as uh, and put the input into this name variable and then i will use this case statement case keyword and then dollar name in and then i will write the condition uh, so let me explain you what i am going to do that like uh, i am going to like do first of all i am going to going to take user input and if the user is root then only he has access to to it okay so now i think that you have understood that what i am going to do okay so after that i will just uh, like write here if the statement is uh, like word is root then uh, after writing this right parenthesis uh, then what will happen that it will echo echo you have access to this folder okay and i'm going to write here two semicolons as of syntax and now i'm going to uh, write here like if you are bkp not bkp vivek means my name then uh, what will happen that it will echo that you don't have have access to the folder okay and after that it will just uh, uh, i will just write this and if someone else something else than root or vivek it will just print uh, uh, like it will just print out the same line okay i will just paste this and uh, you can see that i have used here a asterisk so asterisk means everything uh, okay means if anyone writes anything onto a number symbol and anything then it will just print out this uh, uh, like uh, this statement which is you don't have access to the to the folder okay and then i am now going to write the isac keyword and now i am going to just save the script clear the terminal run the script and now i have to write my name so let's try with vivek and it is like now printing out you don't have access to the folder and if i write here root then it is like telling that you have access to the folder so if you want to like create the same thing using the if else statement then you have to like write so much lines of code 
so case statement basically like uh, it makes easy and you don't have to now like write big code in if else statements okay so it is just the replacement of uh, if else statement not uh, it is not fully the replacement but it is mainly made for this work only okay so in this way you can utilize case statements in your uh, shell scripts and i hope you understand this concept and let's move to the next lecture hello guys welcome to this lecture and in this lecture we are going to see functions in bash so function is a subroutine a code block that implements a set of operators a black box that performs a specified task wherever there is a repetitive code when a task repeats with only slight variation in procedure then consider using a function let's see how to declare a function in shell scripts like you can simply write the function name in this case i am taking it as fun and you have to write two parentheses left and right and then after a left curly braces at the second line you can write the commands and uh, to close the function you have to use this write curly braces okay in this way you can create a function now we are going to see all these things practically so let's move to the terminal now we are on the terminal and i'm going to create a file first of all with uh, uh, like with nano text editor called function.sh and now i'm going to give it a shebang and here is a comment called functions and uh, to declare a function uh, you can just write here fun variable or func variable anything anything as your choice and you have to write here left and right parenthesis and then you have to write here two curly braces and inside this curly braces you have to write the command okay so let's write a simple command like echo output from function okay and now what will happen that uh, we have created this function and uh, let, let's first of all let's run the script and see is there a, anything to see so here I will uh, give it the uh, executable permission and if I run the script you can see that nothing has been printed to the screen but we have like here we have done something we have added a code here echo output from function and it is not working because we haven't called the function yet okay so that's why it is not working so to call the function into a shell script you can just write here the name of the function it is, it is so simple okay and now if i save the script and run the script once more you can see that the, it is printing that output from function okay and now if i just uh, uh, want to just uh, uh, like use it once more you can just uh, write here once more func let's write here three times or four times and let's see what happens so here as you can see that it has printed four times the content of the function and uh, here you can see that we we haven't we don't requires like uh, like writing this code many times you can just use this function func name and uh, the function will be printed here okay you can also add some like uh, commands also inside this and if i change this and i will uh, just write ls okay if i write here ls and save the script it will ls four times as you can see here it is uh, uh, like running the ls command four times on the terminal and there is one more way to create functions which is using this like this syntax you have to first of write uh, first of all write function and you can see that that the color has been changed okay so it means that we have written correctly 
and if we make a spelling mistake here it will not change the color okay and uh, now you can write here the function uh, name okay so uh, as of now i am making it as hello okay and now we have to change also here so the output will not be changed only the like only the way of writing the code has been changed so there are the, these are the two methods of like declaring a function if i run the function you can see that it is uh, doing uh, like running the ls command one one time okay and if i add some more lines here some more times hello then uh, it will just print it three times so we are going to use functions very much in our uh, project section so you must watch that project section it is very like interesting and it is like similar to real world scenarios so it will be very helpful if you are a system administrator or uh, you are working with linux as a developer or uh, like anything okay so this is for this video guys i hope you understand the concept of functions and let's meet on the next lecture hello guys welcome to this lecture and in this lecture we are going to see how to create colorized text on our terminal so you have uh, like seen from many scripts that there are colors on the text so that thing can also be done using shell script okay so for that we have to use echo command you can also use printf command printf okay but it is quite difficult so i will only use echo command okay we have to also use dash e because dash e enables interpretation of backslash escape okay so if you don't use dash e option then backslash is a special character in bash so it will not it will be not be treated as a backslash okay so backslash have a different meaning and after that inside double quotation marks you have to write the syntax okay so this is a syntax backslash e and then this square bracket okay so it begins the color modification okay so this is the syntax you have to like learn it or remember it then comes the color code so color code starts from 30 okay so you have to write 30 m this 30 part is the color code and we have to write the m at the end also and then you have to write here the text that you want to color okay so i will write here bash scripting okay and you have to also close this line so you have to write here like this backslash e and then this square bracket left square bracket and then 0m 0m means exit okay so i will also give here space and if you run this command here then you can see that it has printed it in black colors that's why you are not able to see it but if i change the color code so 30 is for like uh, black color and 31 is for red color now you can see that it is printing in red colors okay so it is very simple it has a color code okay you can also store this into a variable let me show you how to do that i will create a variable here yeah, with red and i will write her equals to so basically it is not a variable it is a string okay i will write here the color code for this uh, red color okay like this i will store this value and i will write here exit is equals to i will store this value inside it okay inside double quotation marks i will write like this and after that if i if i write this same command but i let me show you what i am going to do that i will write here dollar and then exit you can also write any strings value like this and here if you write like this dollar and then red okay and so what happens that here it the value of red comes and here the value of exit comes okay so uh, if you are running commands on shell script inside a script or on the terminal it is uh, like there is no difference in between okay you can also write here 
cell scripts on the terminal in one line also. If I press enter, now you can see that it is working the same. But what happens that we don't have to write this code repeatedly. Okay. So after that, let me show you how uh, there is some more colors also. So I will write here 32 to print out green color and in this way I will write a 33 to print out brown colors there will be 34 to print out blue color and this is 35 for violet color or purple and 36 is for kind color and 37 is for light gray color okay so here's uh, like bash scripting colors ends okay and there are some more options that we are going to try so there is a, a like you can also print here dark gray color by this if i write here like this one and then semicolon and then 30 then it will print out in dark gray, gray color okay and if you write like uh, let me change it no, 31 okay make it 31 you can now see that it is in bold and it is like a little bit lighter than this red okay so you can also print that i will first of all clear the terminal and in this way if you add here one with every color code it will change okay so the next thing that is uh, you can also print bold colors that i have already shown you if you write like this one and then semicolon then color code it will print it in bold colors okay here and after that if i write here three then you can see that it is printing the text in italics okay if i write here four it will underline the text as you can see on the terminal and if i write here five you can see that it is printing a blinking character so five and six have the same features if i write here six it will also blink the character and if i write here seven it like uh, it makes it creates a background red color okay so if i write here like this uh, 8 nothing is happening because 8 color have no functions 9 have a function which like like this okay so in this way you can add many things like uh, bold italics underline blinking characters reverse video characters okay in this way it all works i will also give a documentation on uh, this uh, shell script colors okay and after that the next thing is like how to create a like background color okay on the text so for creating background colors on the text you have to write here 30 for black color no not like that i have to write like sorry not it is not 30 it is 40 okay if you write like this 40 then you can see that the uh, there there is a background of black color if you write here 41 here then you can see that it is creating a background of red color in this way it all works if i write 42 it will create a green color and if i add here one then semicolon then it is also creating a bold okay and then uh, background color okay in this way it goes to 47 okay to print out this white color so i hope you understand how this uh, 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 works and uh, and we are going to use all these things in our shell script in the project section so you must clear your concepts on how to use colors in bash okay so i hope you uh, understand this lecture and let's meet on the next lecture welcome guys now we are going to start our project section and uh, we are going to start with some simple projects only okay so our first project will be a random query generator okay so this will be a very simple project 
so let's get started so for that uh, so our script will uh, what will it do that first of all uh, let me create a file called uh, like project one dot sh okay so this will be our first project and uh, let me explain you what i am going to do that okay so i want to do that like uh, we will generate a random quit at at every time of execution of this script okay so uh, i have also cre uh, like saved a file we have like i have a file called quotes.txt and here are like one two three four five so here are five quotes so i'm going to copy this first of all you can also do that you can uh, take any other quotes okay it's not necessary so i am going to first of all open our file and now for generating random quotes we have to first of all create an array so uh, that array's name will be arr ay okay and after equals to i have to write this uh, this two uh, like parenthesis left and right parenthesis and after that you can give here a space and uh, you can give here a tab space okay and then paste all these quotes okay i'm also going to uh, fix this lines so uh, after that you can uh, like what will happen that we are going to make the like take the use of a built-in variable called random okay so let's like run this so if we run this command echo dollar random so it is a built-in variable we have already studied about build built-in variables and what will happen that if I press enter now it will generate a random number okay so every time I press enter it will like generate a random number you can also give it a range so after that if I write like this echo then dollar symbol then two parentheses left and right parentheses and I will write here random and then I will write here a percentage symbol and then if I write here like five then it will like generate a random number between one like zero to five okay so if i just run it once more it is giving us zero it is giving us three in this way it will not cross five like it will never display six and if you want to get a number between 500 then you can like write like this uh, 500 then you will get a random number between zero to 500 okay is a very useful variable which is a built-in variable now we are going to take the use of this variable to generate a random uh, quote okay now we are going to open our project uh, like project one dot sh and uh, like you have like uh, you have seen that in the array section uh, we can just like write here echo dollar a r r a y okay so if i like uh, uh, echo this array uh, by its name dollar a r r a y then it will like always print this first line let me show you how it works first of all we have to also give it the executable permissions and then i'm going to like run this script now you can see that if i uh, run this script as many times it will always like give us the first line okay and uh, in this way I'm going to clear the terminal I'm going to open our pro uh, like this project file and after that if I write like this uh, this array into this uh, curly braces and if I write uh, one in between this square brackets as you can see here not one I will write here two okay so now it will always print this second line okay let me let me just show you how it works so you can see that now it is printing second line so what if uh, what will happen that if we like uh, write here 
random and then uh, we have we will give her a range between like 0 to 5 because there are only 0 to 5 lines okay so now for that i am going to write here first of all i will write here dollar r a and d o m and then i will write here percentage symbol and then i will write here 5 so what will happen that here uh, it, after execution of this script here this random variable will generate a number between 0 to 5 okay so in this way this script will work and now let's see that what will happen that i will save the script and if i execute this script now you can see that the difference okay here at the first time uh, this is uh, some other quote which, uh, which is written by james cameron and this is after the second execution you can see that this is the quote by eleanor roosevelt okay now if you want to add red color you can write like this backslash e uh, left square bracket then 31 m okay and then at the end you have to write like this backslash e uh, left square bracket and 0 m now it will print out the like red color the quote in red color so now if i save the script and execute it once more now you can see that it is printing the line into red colors okay you can change the uh, color according to your uh, like use case okay uh, if i run the script once more it is generating a random quote and it's look up pretty much good and uh, it works like this much and i hope you understand this lecture now we are going to move to our next project okay so let's meet on the next lecture in this lecture we are going to like focus on a password generator okay so this will generate password according to your input if you like want to generate a eight digit password then it will generate eight digit password or if you want to generate like a 10 digit password or a 20 digit password it will generate that for you so so for this we are going to click uh, like right here nano project 2.sh so this is our second project I'm, I'm going to write here bin slash bash and i will also going to write here password generator okay and now we are going to take input at the time of execution of the script but it will be the length of the password so first of all we are going to uh, use a like a variable called pass and inside it we are going to store uh, this date command let me show you what the date commands does so if i write here date it will print out the current date and uh, i will pass it to sha 256 sha 256 sum so what will ta sha 256 sum will do that it will generate a sha 256 hash of this line okay so if i write like this and i pass to pass it to this then it will generate uh like uh like this is the hash which is uh like uh, its format is sha 256 okay so as you can see that it is generating every time a random hash okay so uh, now we are going to utilize this and now we are going to use a, a cut command and what cut command will do that like it will cut a specific part of this string okay so what will happen that let's see let first of all let's run the cut command and you have to write here dash b for cutting in bytes and then you can provide like this from 1 to 5 you have to cut then you can see that uh, only 5 characters has been cut out from this uh, string okay this is not the same string it always generate a random string okay so if i just run this command once more then you can see that this has generated a random string 
so there is a very simple password generator there can also be some advanced password generators that can be made okay and now i am going to write like this dash b here and then i am going to write like this from 1 to like i will write here uh, like dollar 1 so what will happen that at the ex time of execution of the script uh, we uh, we are giving this uh, script uh, input uh, for how many like what will be the length of this password okay and now we are going to echo here your password is dollar pss okay so this line will be in double quotation marks okay and this is a very simple password generator with only two lines but its concept is like uh, quite good so now i'm going to save the script and now i'm going to give it executable permissions with uh, this and now i'm going to execute the script without any argument if i just execute the script without any argument it is like uh, generating uh, like a whole big password and uh, if i like provide provide here a eight number then it is like uh, telling that your password is this and uh, this is a random eight digit password you can just change the number if you write here seven then it will be seven digit password if you write uh, like 10 it will be 10 digit password okay so in this way it uh, like this password generator can, uh, like works and uh, there will be also some more advanced uh, projects in our project section this is just simple projects so everybody can understand and start projects and like uh, uh, like think creatively so i have not put like difficult things in this project section so i hope you understand this concept let me show you it once more this is the two lines password generator okay so let's meet on the next lecture hello guys in this lecture we are going to create a digital clock using while loops okay so for that i am uh, first of all going to write here nano project e dot sh okay now i'm going to give her the shebang the protocol that we have to follow and then i will write here digital clock okay in this way we have written it digital clock and now what i am going to do that first of all let me uh, like show you the syntax of uh, the date command okay so date command can also be used to print out our like uh, in the in a specific syntax like our minute and then seconds so if you see the help menu of the date command you will see that here are some uh, like percentage symbols so you can print out the month using percentage m uh, like small m percentage uh, capital m will use will be used to print out uh, minutes and uh, percentage n can be used to print out new lines okay so in this way you are we are going to use this minute sign and there is a uh, hourly also this is the hour sign okay percentage capital h and uh, there is also a second this is the second okay so uh, you can give here a specific syntax also okay so now we are going to write here date and then we have to write here plus and then percentage h for hour and we are going to uh, give here a input field separator as colon and then we are going to write here percentage m and then colon and then percentage s for seconds okay now if i rerun this command you can see that the seconds are now changing okay you can see that it is just changing and uh, if you 
like like to use a, a different input field separator then you can write like this okay but uh, semicolon was uh, like sorry colon was a good option so we are now going to use a colon here okay and if you want to only print out this word then you can also write like this 20 you can also print out the seconds okay in this way so we are going to utilize this date command i am going to open our file once more and uh, we are going to take the use of uh, like infinite while loop so we are going to write here while and then colon but we can also write here true true is looking good so i am taking true like uh, and now we can write like this date plus plus is a like syntax for writing this okay and then percentage h colon percentage uh, m and then percentage then colon and then percentage s okay and uh, let's save the script and let's see what happens if i save the script i am giving it the executable permissions project dash 3 dot sh and if i run the script now you can see that it is like uh, not good looking good okay and it is printing continuously the same seconds so now i'm going to open our file once more and i am going to write here a simple command which is sleep and if i write this sleep one then uh, this will sleep the script will sleep by one second okay so after the execution of this command the script will wait one second and then this while loop will once again like do its work and i am going to also write here the clear command to clear out the terminal every time this uh, uh, this every time uh, the date command will print and now i am going to save the script and uh, i am going to run the script once more now you can see that it is like continuously like clearing the screen and it is like a digital clock that we see on our wrist watches or phone like that things you can see that so I know that uh, these projects are not like uh, quite very advanced so uh, advanced project have a different section and these are just to like uh, sharpen your skills and clear your concepts on like uh, where do while loop like infinite while loop works like where do like uh, we can get we can utilize arrays like that things okay so I hope you understand this concept of digital clock and uh, let's meet on the next lecture. Hello guys in this lecture we are going to create a script that will update, upgrade and remove un unnecessary packages from your system. So we are going to uh, do it with three lines of code and th basically these three are uh, basically commands. So uh, these updating and upgrading or removing packages can only be done by the root user okay so now we are going to like create a file called project4.sh okay and now i'm going to give her a shebang slash bin slash bash and here, here i will write a simple comment and after that i'm going to uh, take the use of apt get update command okay and here i will also write a comment uh, so that you can like see from here like i will write here i will write here this command will update your system to latest version of pro
latest version of utilities okay sorry if the spelling is wrong okay and the next command will be apt get upgrade okay and one more thing that you have to also write dash y so you have to write this dash y option because uh, if you run this command it will prompt for yes or no like uh, it will like ask for a last confirmation and then after that it will continue its process and uh, like i will write here a comment for this command this command will upgrade your system to the latest version of utilities okay so it basically like uh, up updates and upgrades your like utilities like uh, some commands software like that things okay so the the next command will be apt get remove so what this command will do that it will remove unnecessary packages from your system okay like if you if a uh, like utility uh, like version is too old then it will remove it okay from your system and uh, the next command like here i will also write the comment this command will remove unnecessary utilities system okay so uh, this command upgrades the updates the system this command up upgrades the system and this command removes unnecessary packages and utilities from your system so these things writing these three commands uh, have no big deal but uh, one more thing that is uh, like very important to automate it at uh, at like every time you re review reboot your machine then uh, these three commands will run and you will uh, like your system will always be updated okay to the latest software updates so now i am going to save the script and i am now going to get the like permission uh, get the, uh, now i'm going to get the location okay so this is the location and uh, now i'm going to switch to root user okay and uh, after that i will give it the password for the root user and now i will run here the command called cron tab and then dash e okay so dash dash if if is for editing and if i first of all i will copy this whole path and we will remember this uh, file name project 4.sh and if i press enter a file will come open and you have to write like this uh, like if you write here uh, at the rate reboot and then this bash and then the whole uh, like this path of this file then what will happen then every time you reboot your machine or your server uh, like uh, this command these three commands will run and your like system will be updated okay to the latest latest like software updates or this kind of things and uh, now we are going to check that uh, this uh, the, like this file like is running at the reboot or not so for that we have to just uh, press ctrl plus o and then uh, press uh, ctrl plus x to exit out and now i am going to reboot our machine and uh, let's see that how it works let's reboot it and now we are going to take a uh, take help of a like command uh, let me first of all make it big and then uh, we are now going to run this command ps and then dash aux here will be aux and now uh, this will display all the processes that are running now in our uh, machine and uh, we are going to grab that thing like we are going to grab here project dash 4 dot sh and if the process is running and it has like done its uh, work then it will display uh, like this like, like root is running this if i make it a smaller a little bit smaller 
then you can see that a process is running right now with bash and this is the full path okay so as you can see here so this means that our like system is uh, like system will upgrade like update upgrade and it will remove all the unnecessary packages at every time we reboot our server or machine in this way all these things work and uh, you can study about uh, cron tabs on some other websites okay so this for this uh, project uh, uh, video guys let's meet on the next lecture hello guys in this lecture we are going to create a project on like uh, you have seen that uh, like if a specific program if a specific script is run into a terminal then it prompts uh, out like uh, you must be root to run this uh, script like uh, that things so basically we are going to like create a script which can only be run by root okay so for that i am going to first of all create a file called project5.sh okay and then i am going to write here the shebang and then i will write here the description of this project can this script run by root okay so this is a very simple uh, like description and uh, now now we are going to write here if we are going to take the use of if else statements okay so i will write here like uh, we will use the like environment variable uid okay so what uid will do that like if you write here echo dollar uid it will print out the like this means uh, currently i am the user currently i am vivek so i have uh, like limited permissions on uh, this system so our you like uid will be 1000 okay and if i switch to the u root user and then if i check my uid then you can see that roots uid is zero so roots uid will always be zero okay so i am going to write here if the uid is equals to zero then it will echo echo you have access to this file system okay otherwise it will print out you must must be root to access this file system okay so this is a very basic uh, like thing okay and we are going to utilize this uh, small uh, like small like four to five lines of code in our later scripts i'm going to just uh, like, uh, like close the if else statement and this is a very simple script okay let's uh, let's uh, like run this and see how it works so i will write here chmod plus x project 5.sh and then i'm going to clear the terminal and i'm going to run this script so you can see that it is like prompting you must be root to access this file system okay and uh, now if i like if i switch to root user and then i run this script now you can see that it is like prompting you have access to the file system okay so this is a basic difference uh, like so this is a, a very basic simple project we are going to utilize this uh, this thing in our upcoming projects also okay so let's meet on the next lecture. hello guys in this lecture we are going to see how to create a package installer using shell script okay so we are going to install three packages first package is piglet second is sl and third is net tools okay 
so these are the uh, three packages that the is going to install okay and first of all i'm going to write here nano project 5.sh okay then i'm going to write here the shebang with slash bin slash bash and here i'm going to write here the description for our project So packages can only be installed or like removed by the root user. Okay. So normal user doesn't have the permissions to like install or remove packages. So we are going to write here if we are going to first of all check that if the root user is running the script or not. So I will write here dollar UID is not equals to zero. So if the uh, if root user is not running the script, then it will echo out error. Run as root user. Okay. So it will print out this error. Okay, and. Uh, after that it will exit it out from here so i will write at the exit keyword it will exit with the status one okay and here i will close the if else statement with the fi keyword and after that i will i am going to declare here a very uh, like array okay so i will write here packages and here i will write the simple comment that are going to be installed okay so this is the simple comment and we are going to create this array here and i'm going to write here figlet and then sl and then net tools you can also uh, like write here uh, different different kinds of packages as you want and after that i will write here the for for, for loop so i will write here for i in and i will write here dollar and inside that i will write here packages and inside this uh, square brackets i will write here at the rate symbol so it will print out all these packages okay uh, so we are not going to print out it we are going to install this so i am going to write here apt install dollar i so dollar i means uh, uh, this is the variable and uh, every time the loop will like run then it will like uh, like store different different kinds of packages name into it okay so I will write here apt install dollar i then I will also write a dash y option to not ask for confirmation and uh, then uh, first of all I will also like echo here echo installing dollar i so we will be updated which package is now installing and after the installation it will also print out here installation completed completed okay it will print out here after that i will run uh, right here the done keyword and I will also, I'm also going to add some colors here. So at here, I will write the red color inside double quotation mark. I will write here 
e then uh, this backslash and here i will write here 31 m okay and here i will write here green and i will write here e this backslash and then 32 m okay and i will write here exit and inside double quotation marks i will write here e and then this 0 m okay and i'm going to write here dash e option to also integrate this colors into our scripts so i will write here dollar red and add here i will write here dollar exit okay here i will also write here exit and here i will write dollar green so now uh, let's save the script but first of all i am also going to print here a echo message add here okay now i will save the script and i will give it the executable permissions and i will run the script here so it is printing out run at root uh, run as root user okay so we will switch to the root user and now if i run the script here and we have created a small mistake here so the first mistake was uh, that we have to add a backslash before the e and the second mistake was so the second mistake was we have to uh, like throw all the output and error into def slash null which is the black hole and we are going to write here ampersand symbol then this symbol and then def slash null okay so it will not print out anything on the screen and the third mistake was that we have to also add here a dash e option to like integrate it with colors okay and now i am going to save the script here i will once again run the script and let's see how it is working now it is printing out installing Piglet then installation completed, installing SL, installation completed, installing net tools and installation completed. Okay, so this was a very basic project. Okay, so you can also create a project like that. This, if, uh, uh, if, if one of these packages is already installed, then it will print out that, uh, like, for example, Piglet is already installed, it will print out on the screen and it will not install Piglet. Uh, like that that script so i know you can, you can do that with your creativity so let's meet on the next lecture hello guys welcome to this project and in this project we are going to create a script that will convert these these dot jpg files into dot png files okay and uh, this same process is also used in like uh, live servers uh, if you are if you are a developer or if you have worked with the website developing then you have must seen in the like c panel that there is an option to convert all jpg files into png files okay like that things because jpg files take take less space than png files okay so if we, you are we are also going to do like we are going to convert this jpg file into png file using a shell script okay so for that i am going to create a file here first of all with the name project 7.sh okay and then i am going to write here the shebang bing slash bash okay and then i am going to write here a simple comment
that processes processes images okay so this is basically a image processing cell script so as of this project you have to install a tool okay so first of all you have to change your user means you have to be root and then you have to run this command like apt get install graphics magic and then hyphen ima image magic dash compact okay so you have to install this tool you need to just press enter and it will install it and uh, we are going to use we are going to take the help of this command to like create our shell script okay so i am going now going to build here the shell script and uh, first of all i am going to write here uh, we are going to take input from the command line okay so for that uh, first of all i am going to write here if else statement and uh, here we will write here dollar and then hash why because we are we are going to take arguments and if the argument is zero and then we are going to print the usage okay so i will write here is equal to zero then echo we will print out the usage so we will also print out the file name so this is the file name uh, we can print out the file name using dollar zero so if i press like if i run the script here let's see that you can see that uh, the file name has been printed but we have to remove this part okay so i need to first of all open our script and we need to remove this thing so we are going to print the usage okay so we will write here file 1 file 2 till file n and okay so if the if the user has doesn't provided any argument then it will print out this message okay so let's check that so i have not provided here any argument that why it is pro, uh, like printing out this uh, usage message so i will also write here usage then a colon and then this thing let's run the script and see so it is now working fine so first of all we are going to run here a for loop with like like this syntax for i in dollar at the rate so it will loop all the files here okay until uh, the file ends okay and now uh, we will write here do and now i will i am going to write here if else statement and if the file exists dollar a no here will be dollar i okay so let me explain you what i have done here so what will happen that this for loop will take out this file one uh, file one and it will uh, like after that it will go to this if else statement and if the file is real and is present on the this uh, like it is a regular file then what will happen then it will convert that file means this dollar i to this uh, like with the same file name and it will add here a dot png extension okay so this is the basic use case of this uh, script and if the file is uh, not a regular file then it will print out dollar i is not a file let me add here a regular file regular file okay
and uh, we will also and at the end we will also print out uh, like this so i will write here uh, file conversion completed so let's check that how it is working so i will save the script here and now i will run the script here let's see that how it is working so for uh, testing we are going to create a directory here and i am going to copy that file dot jpj to that directory and i am go also going to copy this project 7 to that test directory i will go to the test directory and i will ls now i will run the script here with zero arguments on the command line now it is uh, so i have to also write here exit so i will first of all we have to write here exit uh, because uh, after this usage nothing should be printed okay so now if i run the script here with no arguments then you can see that it is like uh, printing out the usage message of the script and if i like run it with this file name then let's see that what happens so i will write here linux logo.jpj now it is uh, like printing out file conversion completed and now if i ls then you can see that there is a small problem that it is also adding .jpg extension here but it shouldn't be here okay so we are going to fix it and i already know about this problem but i have uh, like intentionally like i have made this problem okay to understand you better so what happens really here that uh, it gets out the file name uh, wholly and it prints out here okay so at here means at here dollar i becomes linux logo.jpg so it is also writing here linux uh, logo.jpg at here so i will create a variable here like file underscore name is equals to then we are going to write here backticks and i will write here echo dollar i then we are going to write here a simple command seed command and it has a specific syntax also okay so i will write here s and then the forward slash and inside this uh, square brackets i will write dot and i will write here dot after that and i will write here everything means asterisk and then i will write here double forward slashes so what will happen that uh, it uh, like basically here at here uh, like linux logo.jpg prints out and at here it removed everything after the dot means it removed dot jpg from the file name and now i am going to write here dollar file underscore name okay so it will print out the same file name but with a different extension so i am going to save the script here and now i am going to remove that this file from here so it will be good and i will clear the terminal and i will run this uh, command once more and let's see that how it is working now you can see that this is like generating a dot png image so it is a, it was a very simple project okay and let's also see by going inside that directory our test directory and now you can see that it is like uh, this first one is in the jpg format and this second one is in the png format okay and you must be thinking about what is the need for this conversion so let's check the size of the png file and it's about 38.4 kb okay and let's check this jpj one and it is about 6.6 .6 kb so uh, let's think that you have lots of png files like uh, thousands of png files and it is uh, taking very much big amount of space on your web server then you can just change all your png files to jpj files so it will take less space but we have like done here uh, like the reverse of this project 
you can like change any any like any image format from any like different image format it wholly depends on you okay so this for this lecture guys i hope you understand this lecture and let's meet on the next lecture hello guys in this project we are going to create a script that will give out the about the file information the creation date and this kind of things owner so we are going to test with this uh, employee underscore data.csv file so you can see that here is the information uh, that we are getting through ls-la command and we are going to frame this all this information in such a way that if a person who doesn't know anything about linux can also understand by its output what uh, what this is okay so we are going to utilize all this information permissions byte size owner file name and creation time date month okay all these things we are going to frame that in the script first of all i am going to write here i will create a file here with the name project 9.sh and i will write here the shebang at the starting of the line and here i will write the project de description so i will write here this script will give you the information of a file okay so this is the simple description of our project and now i'm going to show you one thing here now i have also opened a tab simultaneously so i will show you also what these commands look like so i will write here this command ls-la and this then the file name you can see here all the information of this specified file so if you write like this and uh, pass it to the off command and if you write like this uh, awk and then quotation marks and then inside that you will write here uh, this curly braces and inside it if you write here print dollar one then you can see that it has printed the first field okay so in awk this is called field and it is uh, like fully different from arguments okay and now you can see that if i write here dollar two then it is printing out the second field and to print out this first field which is the owner and the group name you can write here th three then it will print out the owner name which is vivek okay by writing this command dollar three means print dollar three okay and then if i write here uh, if i want to get this uh, june uh, june field then what i will do that i will write here six and you can see that it is giving us uh, june okay in this way all commands work it is a small overview so i, I will write here if else statement i will write here dollar i will write here dollar and then hash okay so dollar hash means number of arguments that are provided at the time of execution of a script so if number of arguments is equals to zero then what will happen that it will print out a usage message okay on the terminal okay here i will write here usage colon dollar zero dollar zero means it will print out the file name and here i will write the syntax of how to use this script and here i will write the fi keyword to close the uh, this and i will first of all give it the executable permissions using chmod plus x project 9.sh and now i will run the script and you can see that if i run it with zero arguments then it is printing out the usage message okay it is very simple and uh, if i run it with some uh, arguments then you can see that nothing has been printed now i will uh, go to our file here okay and then we want to first of all get the owner information so for that i will write here I will write here echo and then I will write here double quotation marks and then I will write here owner colon and 
after that i will write here back ticks because i i am going to run a command here uh, first of all i will write here ls dash la and then dollar zero dollar zero means the file name and then i will pass it to awk command So this is the uh, this is not looking good. So I am going to create here a variable first of all, and then I am going to write the same command here, ls dash la, and then dollar zero means the file. We will write dollar uh, one means file, and then the awk command. And inside the awk command, I will write here print dollar. Then you can see that owner name is on the third number field. Okay, I will also run it here and show you. You can see that it is on the third number, and for that's why I am going to write here dollar three. So it will print out the owner, and here I will call the variable's name. Okay, which is dollar owner. So it will print out the owner's name. Okay, and then after that. I will print out the size means how many bytes this file is taking on our machine. So I will write here first of all echo. I will write here uh, size colon, and I have to also create here a variable name size, and I will write a equals to, and inside back ticks. I will run, uh, use the same command, but I will only change the dollar. Three number. Okay, so I will make it. Let's check that it is the uh, like. I will write here dollar five. Okay, so it will print out the byte size. I will also write here the variable name dollar size, and then I will also write here bytes. So it will be easy for a uh, like person to understand what is written there. Okay. And after that, I will write here echo. And I will. This is the creation time of the script, which is twenty three colon eleven. It is around eleven eleven. Okay. So I will write here echo. This file was created on. I will uh, run here uh, like. This is the month and this is the date, so I will also create here a variable called month, and then I will run the same command here also, but I will only change the dollar five means this. Okay, so I will write here. So uh, this part is on the sixth and seventh field. Okay, so I will write here six dollar six, and then inside double quotation marks I will write here a space. So you, if you want to give her a space, then you have to write it between double quotation marks. Otherwise, it will not work if you write her the the space without double quotation marks. Okay, you can see that I have given her space in between double quotation marks. Now I will call the variable here using dollar month, and I will write her at, and it will uh, like print out this. Time okay, so I will also create here a variable called time, and uh, I will pre uh, like paste this, and I will write a dollar eight to print out the time. So it will basically print out this file was created on da dash month at dash time. Okay, I will write here echo. and then I am going to write here. file type so we are also going to see what is the file type so for that i am going to write here the file command and then dollar 1 because uh, let's run here the file command and we are going to give the file name and it is like showing us this is the csv text file okay so in this way it works and here i have also done that thing now i will write here echo I will echo right here. Echo for building a blank line. Now I am going to see what are the permissions for this file. 
readable, writable, and executable permissions. We are going to check out. So I will I'm going to write here eco permissions inside double quotation mark. And here I am going to write eco. I will write here if else statement to check out the permissions of the file. So for readable permissions, I am going to check uh, like right here dash r, and if the file is readable, then what will happen that it will uh, like echo out. Readable is equals to true. Okay, it will echo out this value. And I will make it in uh, between double quotation mark. And uh, else, if the file is not readable, then I will echo out here. I will first of all copy this and I will paste it here. And I will uh, like echo out false. So, if the file is readable, then it will true, uh, echo out uh, true, otherwise, it will echo out false. Okay. I will also write here the comment so that you can understand when you are uh, like creating these scripts and i will write here checking readable permissions okay and we are going to now see the writable permissions so i will write here a comment checking checking writable permissions and then i will do the same thing but i will only change this parameter which is from dash r to dash w okay and i will write here dollar one now i will write like this echo echo writable colon true okay writable is equals to true and if the file is not writable then i will print out here uh, else echo I will copy this and I will write here false okay in this way this script will work and I will write the fi keyword to close the if else statement now I will write here hashtag checking ha uh, like write here a comment checking for executable permissions okay and here i will write uh, if dash x and then the file name means dollar one okay if the file is executable then it will echo out executable is equals to true else it will echo out executable is equals to false in this way this script will work and i will close the if else statement with the fi keyword and then i will also write here echo and then file file name and then colon and then dollar one so it will print out the file name then i will uh, like print out a blank line and then let's see the script how it works and first of all i will clear the terminal and i will run the script here okay and i will provide the file also let's run it without any uh, like this so uh, it has some problems so we are going to fix that so for that here we have to write here exit keyword to exit out if the user hasn't provided any arguments at the time of execution of the script okay that's why it is showing this thing okay now i will uh, run it without zero with zero arguments then you can see that nothing has been printed as than the usage now i will run it with some like this file then you can see that it is printing out the file name which is employee underscore data dot csv then it is printing owner then bytes and then this file was created on june 25th at this time 
okay and then it is also printing out the file type which is csv text and these are the permissions this has uh, this has readable permissions writable permissions but it is not executable okay so if i check uh, one more file which is the jpg file then you can see that it is uh, it is also readable writable but it is not executable okay and you can see the uh, file type jpg image data okay so in this way this uh, this project works and you can also create big big projects big big scripts according to your requirements and it is uh, like like uh, these projects are not limited to the thing that i have like i have shown you here uh, i will also like give you some ideas on some more projects in a in the resource section so you must check that and uh, i hope you like all these projects hello guys in this lecture we are going to create a project which will gather information from employees and store it into a csv file okay so basically we are creating a database here okay first of all i will create a uh, file with the name project 8.sh okay and then i will first of all write here the shebang okay and then here i will write the description for this project this script will gather information from employees and store it into csv file so csv files are basically excel files okay and uh, we are going to use a new method of getting input from our uh, employees okay here i will fix the this spelling mistake and now i will write uh, this command read and then with the option dash p okay and uh, i will write here first of all i will write here the plus symbol and then i will write here enter your name okay and after that i will uh, first of all it will like prompt here enter your name and this uh, after the after the employee enter his name it will it will be stored in the name variable okay so this is a very simple thing let's see it how it works so i will save the script and i will give it executable permission first of all and then i will run the script here now you can see that i have written my name here and it is like it is printing our name on the terminal as we have defined here eco dollar name okay and in this way i am going to also uh, get the input of employee id you can like make uh, it anything according to yourself it is only for like demonstration purposes so i'll write here enter your employee id and i will put it into id variable after that i will run this uh, write the same command here and I will write here enter your department and I will put its value into department variable okay and then this will be the last thing that we are going to get from our employees which is uh, uh, enter your gender means we are going to get the gender gender okay and i will put this information into gender variable And now after that
and now after that I will also write here read dash p and I will prompt for a confirmation that uh, the employee has written the correct information okay so I will write here do you have given the correct information and we are going to also use here a case statement so uh, for this we are going to write this here so if the employee has written correct information then it will uh, press here y otherwise it uh, like he or she will be pressing n okay y is for yes and n is for no and i will put this value into the input variable after that i will write here the case statement i will write her case and after that I will write here the input variable with a dollar input okay and I will write here the in keyword okay and then I will write here a small n and I will write here a pipe symbol and I will write here a capital N so if uh, small n or capital n has been inputted uh, then it will exit out okay then the script will close and nothing will be stored in the database and I will also write here Two semicolons and if the user like uh, write here capital Y or small y then what will happen that then it will like put that information into a file so first of all I have to also uh, create here a variable okay and we are going to put all these variables value into that variable so the variable name will be info means information and I will write at equals to sign then I will first at first place the name will come and I will write here a comma and comma is used as an input field separator in CSV files okay so I will write here comma you can also give here a tab space or anything that you wanted but you have to like uh, define it into uh, at the time of opening of this CSV file then I will write a dollar ID and then one comma and then dollar department okay add here I will write here gender means dollar gender so here I will write here echo echo dollar info so all these variables data will be like appended into uh, a file called employee underscore data dot csv so you must remember that you have to write this dot csv extension okay otherwise it will not work you can give the file name as you, uh, anything you want and after that I will write here double semicolon and uh, I will write here asterisk asterisk means anything other than uh, n or y is if is in input then it will exit out the script okay asterisk is a wild card okay and now I will write here the exact keyword to close the case statements and here I will copy this file name okay after everything after gathering information we are going to echo a message here your data has been stored successfully okay and now I will save the script here and I will create a file also here with the name employee underscore data dot csv this script is going to use that this file so i will write a name comma id comma department and again a comma and then gender okay so you have to also create this file or you can define it creating on the script also okay now i will run the script here okay and here i will enter my name vivek pandit and then i will enter anything here employee id just random numbers and i will write the department name sales okay 
it's just for demonstration purposes and here I, I will write the gender okay now it is prompting for if you have uh, like uh, given the correct information or not so at this time user can check it once more and here you can see that it is printing out your data has been stored successfully okay now i will cat the employee underscore data dot csv file and let's check that it is like working or not now you can see that it is working correctly and it has like put it uh, down the informations of the employee okay and this thing we want okay everything is correct as you can see here now i will run the script once more i will write my name here once again okay and at this time i will give the incorrect information and here it is prompting for uh, either you do you have given the correct information i will type n and press enter okay as you can see here i have uh, given a uh, like make here a mistake and i will uh, type here n okay capital n this time and i will press enter and now if i cat this file then you can see that nothing has been stored in the file so in this way it works now i will write one more entry into it i will write here y to confirm our our information and you can see that it is prompting your data has been stored successfully okay now i will cat this file once again now you can see that it is working fine and we are going to open this file employee underscore data dot csv into LibreOffice. okay so i will open here this and i will just double click on this file as you can see So LibreOffice is a free okay I will take the input field separator as comma you can take anything and I will press okay now you can see that uh, here at the header section you can see that everything is fine and at the information uh, like name ID department gender everything is fine in this way you can also create your uh, uh, like database creating script you can also add here like mysql database mariadb database if you know how to do like how to create website and how to like create forms in html okay javascript all the all these things okay so i hope you understand the concept of this project now let's move to the next project hello guys we are going to create a server utilization checking script okay so it will give out the information about the server or your current system like uh, it will give out some basic information to some advanced informations like uptime currently logged on users like disk and memory usage utilization of processes and these kind of things okay so for that i'm going to first of all create a file here called project6.sh okay and now I'm going to write as the shebang. I am going to write here the like comment. Okay. Here like server you utilization. Okay. And uh, at at the first, now we are going to also take the use of some colors. So I will write here color color and i will write here three variable uh, like three strings red green and exit okay i will write here the equals to sign okay and inside that we are going to write here like this uh, the color code of red which is 31 m and uh, for green it's uh, 32 m so i will write like this 32 m and for exiting 
it is like zero so it is zero m okay so we have defined here all the colors okay now i am going to print here a small like uh, banner at first of all and before doing that we are going to clear the terminal so it will be looking good okay and after that i am going to write here like this echo dash e and uh, i will write it inside this so i will first of all i will write like this and again i will write this i will write here server server utilization okay and then uh, i will also add here asterisk symbols And at here I will just copy this line from here and I will just paste it out here let's see how it is looking first I will give uh, here the executable permissions Now you can see that it is looking quite good uh, but we are also going to add some colors and we are also going to add uh, make it little bit in the right okay so I will give her some spaces and I will uh, make it in this in green color okay and I will just copy this from here and I will paste it at here at the starting of every line and at the end of every line I will write like this dollar exit okay like this so let's see how it is looking now you can see that it is looking quite good okay now I'm going to do one more thing that I am going to make this colors in bold so I'm going to add here one and then colon sorry semicolon and I will uh, write here one and then semicolon and now it will be in bold so you can see that it is like printing here in bold letters now I'm going to first of all print out the date and before that I am going to print out a blank line okay and at here I will uh, print out here echo dash e today's date is colon and inside backticks I will write the date command let's see how it is working now you can see that it is uh, like looking quite good and here i will open it once more and i will write here echo for printing blank line and i will also create a function here okay so i will name this function divider let me add a space here and inside the content of the function will be a divider okay so i will write here echo dash e and then i will write here dollar uh, red and then here will be a small divider like this okay and at the end i will write here like this dollar exit 
and I will print the divider at here di vi dr okay in this way now let's see that how it is looking so there was a spelling mistake let's make it correct now you can see that it is like uh, looking quite good so it is printing out today's date is this and now we are going to take the use of the uptime command so I will first of all write here echo and uh, I will write here echo up uptime okay and I will write here a colon and then I will run the uptime command here okay in this way I will write it between quotation marks so it will look good and I will write here echo and then again the divider okay let's see that how it is looking so you can see that this is the today's date and this is the uptime I think here uh, at this place uh, one divider is needed so I'm going to add it at there now it is uh, looking quite good and uh, now the next command will be that we are going to run first of all we are going to run echo for printing blank lines and uh, we are going to see currently logged on users so i will write here echo simply logged on users okay in this way and then i will run the w command okay and i will write here echo and then the divider and i will save the script and i will run the script once more now you can see that it is printing out the currently logged on users so our currently logged on user is the only user which is me vivek and after that we are going to see last three logged on users okay so i am going to first of all write here echo and then i am going to write print out here last logins okay and then i will write here the command last and then dash a option and I will only get the three means the first three lines of this command so if I run this command in the terminal let me show you the output you can see that uh, it is also showing the currently logged down time and system boot okay these thing, kind of informations so I will after that I will print here a line echo and then i will print here divider okay let's run the script once more now you can see that it is uh, like giving us so much information and you can also increase the length of the divider and you can also increase the server utilization banner okay and now i am going to like add here some more lines to like show the disk and memory usage so i will echo a blank line here and then I will echo here disk disk and uh, memory usage okay and here I will run a command called df with the h option and then I will pass it to xargs because uh, like org doesn't support uh, like uh, input from other commands so we are going to utilize a command called awk and I'm going to explain it don't worry and I'm going to write here inside curly braces print free or total disk and then I will write here a colon and after that I will print out dollar eleven means the eleventh field and inside double quotation marks I will write here the separator 
and after that I will write here dollar nine okay and this is a simple command and now let's let's first of all change one thing I have done a mistake here we have to write here total okay and if we run the script once more then you can see that here it is printing out di disk and memory usage okay so this is the free or total disk usage so there is one more error here i have written here semicolon but it needs a colon at here and let's make it in capital this and now if i run the script you can see that it is like giving us disk uh, this is the disks value okay memory value we are going to now write here okay so for memory to get the memory value we have to write this command free and then dash m and if you are not able to understand this uh, uh, this script i recommend you to create your small small scripts and uh, just like practice and then just come to this script okay we are going to run this xcrgs command with the awk awk command and inside that i am going to write here print and then free or total memory i have done here a mistake so i have just like fixed it and then inside it i will write here a colon and then i am going to uh, like write here dollar 17 and then there will be this separator and after that i am going to write here dollar 8 to print out the 8 field and now i am going to write here mb okay so it will display its value in mb and i am going to add here a semicolon a quotation mark and let's see how it works so i think that there are some errors so we are going to fix that so i think that this is not needed here let's see that how it works so we have to write the quotation mark here and here also it will be and then I'm going to just save the script and run the script once more now you can see that it is giving the correct values here and after that I need to also add some blank lines at here okay so I will write here echo and then I will also write here echo and I will write here echo and I will write here divider so it is divided from all these things okay so now let's see that how these commands work so let's take first of all this part of the command and if you run this command here you will get uh, the file system information and the size of the file system used availability availability available file system and used percentage mounted on so there are like five informations about the file system and we are basically interested on this 11th number field so let's count the 11th number field from here so this is the first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eight nine ten eleven so this is the 11th number field so if you want to get this field then you can just pass it to xargs first of all and then you need to pass it to off command and off command will print out you have to write this syntax print and then dollar 11 so this is the 11th field and now if you press enter you will get this field and similarly uh, here we are getting the 9th field so we have written here so this is the 9th field okay this is the 11th so this is the 9th field and if you want to get this field you need to just write here 9 and you will get this field so xargs is a command to just uh, uh, like pass these are uh, these commands output so 
this uh, like this off command can take this command output as input okay we have seen all these things in the input output redirection section so we are now going to go here and let's check that how the script is looking right now it is looking quite good okay and now now the next thing is and this will be the last thing there are more things that you can add here but i will not make this video too long otherwise it will be boring so i will write here echo and then dollar like uh, inside quotation marks i will write here utilization utilization and most expensive processes okay i will write like this and after that i will try write a simple blank line here so i am going to use the top command here so i will write here top so top command is basically used to like uh, monitor system processes and cpu memory this kind of thing in real time okay so you can see that this genome shell is using the most uh, part of the like this uh, memory or CPU as you can see here and we are going to use that so I'm going to first of all print out that with the dash B option and I want to only get this first three lines at here okay so we can get the like we can see here the CPU percentage used and I will write here dash M3 and then after the echo I will write here top command and then dash B option then I will get the first 10 lines so if I run the command in the terminal let's see that what happens now you can see that I have got the first 10 lines but I don't need these, these lines so what I will do that I will uh, use the tail command okay and I will write here tail dash n and I want to get this last uh, four lines so if I run this command on the terminal you would get to see that we are only getting these three lines and if I save the script right now uh, so I have to also print here divider and if I save the script right now and uh, you can see that our script is right now completed this is the first of all this is the date section and this is the uptime these are currently logged on users information this is the last login user information and this is the disk and memory usage so this is the disk usage and this is the memory usage of our system and this is the information of utilization and uh, most expensive processes okay so as you can see here this means uh, me means Vivek is the user which is utilizing the most of the system resources okay so you can also add colors at here at the this part at every every part here you can enhance this according to yourself and you can add some more things also okay uh, like you can also add ps uh, first of all i will just clear this you can also add ps ox this command sorry for that so it will also uh, provide you the system uh, like a brief overview of our system resources so i hope you understand this uh, project and i hope you like this let's meet on the next lecture hello guys so this is the last video of this course and i hope you enjoyed this course very much and you have learned a good skill and valuable skill in your life so I am bringing this bonus video for you where I will give you shell scripting project ideas so you can like work on these scripting projects yourself and for that the first project is this draw a special pattern you can draw any pattern as you like but I am giving you an example you can draw this pattern and there are total 10 project ideas you will find this file in the resource section of this bonus lecture you must check that
and i uh, like there are these are all the project ideas that you can work on and uh, sharpen your skills into shell scripting so this is for this video guys i hope you enjoyed this full course with lots of adventurous projects